All right, guys, we're back on the episode nine today for our podcast. Yeah. Let's go. I, I was hoping yeah. Curtis would stutter. Sometimes he gets first word stutters <laughs> when he jumps in. All right, we're going to start off today with our ranking 90s cartoons. This has been asked of us quite a bit to rank 90s cartoons, and I have to give a disclaimer. I was looking on like Wikipedia, like, let me look at all the night. There's like a million 90s cartoons that are great. We cannot do all of them. It's not possible. I left out like 50 of them that I desperately wanted to do, but we just can't do them all. So welcome boys. Ricky, you uh, are going to start us off. Pick a number between one and 10. Seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We are starting off with the Animaniacs. Ricky, Ooh. you chose it. So you get to go first. I really love Animaniacs. Wait, wait, does this include Pinky and the Brain? The Animania Pinky and the Brain is in right. Animaniac, so yes. Very, very funny, very cool show, but the P Pinky and the Brain are my favorite thing. That was your favorite thing? That was out my of them. favorite thing on Animaniac. Yep. Really? Yeah. Mine I can, too. I, I can go with that one too. Pinky and yep. the Brain. They used to call me and my cousin Pinky and the Brain, and I was always Pinky. Oh. So. <laughs> so what's your ranking? What's your ranking? <laughs> uh, my ranking on that one. I want to give it an S, but I'm going to keep it on an A tier. Okay, and for anybody that doesn't know, in case you're new to this, S is best, F is obviously worse. So Ricky's starting us off with an A. A. Chris? I loved Animaniacs, but for the same reason. I loved Pinky and the Brain. Yeah. Really? Which I think was later a standalone show at some point. Yes. Yeah, but it wasn't. <laughs> but it started off as like a like a side thing to yes. Animaniacs. Yes. But I love Animaniacs. I would give it, what'd you give it? A. I'd give it an A. Would you give it, Curtis? I'm going to give it A, yeah. A Solid also? A. Yeah. I'm going to give it a B just because there's a couple on here that I know have to go way above it. For me, personally, Ooh. on a personal level. But I will say, my favorite wasn't Pinky in the Brain. I did like Pinky in the Brain. I also also like the Pigeons. The Pigeons. Their little oh, spin off. The pigeons are but so I, good. I really love the Animaniacs themselves. I love the Wheel of Morality. Turn, turn, turn. Tell us a lesson we must learn. Uh, all the different songs they did. Super fun, super goofy for me, B. But you guys both said A's. So I think that's just like a solid A, maybe you know maybe right there in the middle there closer to a b i'm gonna go at random and pick the next one ready spin 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 right here ooh. i picked ooh, oh, oh, gargoyles. This is a solid oh, one man hey. Ooh boy uh let's go chris give us your first thoughts it's a great show i as a kid i did not watch it that oh much. okay I'll be honest with you, i really did not of all the other 90s that were out there but i do remember it it is good i love the artwork it's like the animated batman series. yes so, dark dark very so, dark so good but again i didn't watch it all that much okay. so for that reason i'd probably give it a b okay a b nice ricky oh. I, I'm actually going to give it an A because I loved it. Yeah. I really loved, like, Goliath and all the guys. Dude, great show. Yeah, fantastic great show. show. Curtis? Man, that's going to be an S tier for me, man. You're S tier. I love it. Yeah, because I love like collecting it. all those little like figures it. for him, too, man. It was like, every time I see him out in the swap, I'm stoked. I'm like, yeah. gargoyles, let's go. <laughs> I was collecting gargoyles for a little while, too, as far as toys. Uh, Genesis game, I think, was one of the first things I got gargoyles-related Besides the actual, you know, getting back into the show, there's also like a big box VHS for it that's really nice. Oh, yeah, that is. I cool. found that multiple times at the swap meet, and it's like a nice big box, really clean, really cool looking. Um, for me, I've always loved like the darker style stuff. I showed it to my son too a few years ago, and he was super hyped on it. And that was like when he was like in that early phase of like, Dad, you're nerdy nostalgic 90s stuff is lame so when he liked this i was like okay that shows me he thinks it's cool uh for me i'm going solid solid a so that was a a s b a so it's a solid a now yes that girl did that girl did you think that girl looked like carmen san diego yes absolutely always thought that during the show sorry there's probably some universe thing guys question though does gargoyles go above animaniacs or not slightly i'm gonna put an s in there Oh, there was you know an what? S. Okay, it, it'll be at a tie. You know why? Because of the S and the. I feel like it would. They would both. Both okay, average I'm, out. To I'm end. locking them in solid, right next oh. to each other. Uh, Which I'm Chris, cool with. Why don't you pick the next one? If you can see, Beto, give us a full screen on that. There we go. Chris, what's Chris? You pick the next one. Uh, X Men. X Men. Oh. Okay, and you get a start. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I picked it for a reason. Oh my gosh, this is one of my possibly my favorite cartoon of okay. all all time. So it's a solid S for me. Okay. I mean that noise that you just said. The opening intro to it was so unbelievable. You know what's funny? I love the opening intro, but I don't like the riff. Funny enough, the riff part that comes during that intro. I love that. I don't like that part. The build up. Picture that. I just remember the tune. 
and they're all flying. <laughs> oh my gosh, it was so good. And Wolverine in this was unbelievable. I loved his yellow suit He's character. So like just, it was so 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 good. It's I, so true to the comics. I sent a clip it. not too long ago. I think to all of us yeah. that I forgot about. You know, me being a Christian guy, where Nightcrawler s- helped save Wolverine. I saw yeah. that episode recently. And I was like, yeah. whoa, I don't remember this. Nightcrawler was like talking to him and kind of like, you know, he gave him a Bible. That's what it was. Yeah. yeah. He gave him a Bible, just kind of, you know, told Wolverine who's going through some stuff. And the episode ends with, I think, either Rogue or Jubilee, I think Rogue, seeing like walking in to like a church after she was hanging out with Cyclops and Wolverine's down there like accepting the Lord. I'm like, I don't remember this, but it recently <laughs> came in my feed. I, you, you shared that. That's right. And it shows him like kneeling, like accepting the Lord in the yeah. church. It's pretty awesome. I was scene. like, well, it was cool, especially for someone, you know, like me who's yeah. into that. I was like, that's cool. Um, I'll jump in since I was there. Uh, 100% A for me as well. 100%. Defining cool 90s, right? There's like fun 90s. There's like Animaniacs. There's Nickelodeon 90s. But when I think of like cool like, when you were a kid and you were watching X-Men, you were a cool kid. A for me. You said... S. S. Okay, go Curtis. I'm a solid A. I loved it. I love Scott Summers. I love Beast. I loved um, Storm. I loved all of them. Like, even... Yeah. Gr- uh, what's it called? Gray... Phoenix. I can't think of her name right now. Uh, Jean, Jean, Jean Grey. Gray. Jean Grey. Yeah. Jean Grey. Yeah. Those characters are crazy to me. Yeah. And, awesome. and Professor X is, like, one of the most notable people. Like, even his little spinoff movies have been yeah. really great. I, I remember he, I thought he was like the coolest person that I knew with a shaved head. That was, oh, that was when I was a kid. Like, that's the coolest person I've seen with I a shaved head? I thought it was head. Mr. Clean for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. Ricky, what do you got? Straight up S tier, dude. That's yes. Gambit in there. Oh, oh yeah, Ricky. Yeah. I thought yeah. I forget about Gambit. Gambit. Like, oh, that's everybody's sub- favorite, And he had the too. southern accent, oh, like the Louisiana I accent. Was, I wish I was Gambit. <laughs> Gambit dude, is one of the cool, one of the coolest, one of my favorites ever, coolest. by far. Like, dude, that show was so good. I, that's like the one show I would look forward to every day. Me I'm too. Like, oh, I can't wait. So, am Me I the only too. one that didn't say S? You said S. I said A. Okay, S-S. so we're, S-S, we're, we're, A-A. it's the highest so far. It's, highest it's so far. Yeah, for sure, for sure. It's, nothing's S-A. gonna beat it. S A. Okay. You know, kind of like on par with this. I think we should go into the ding, ding, no, ding. No, no, wait. No? I have a better idea, Curtis. Watch what? this. We got to rate this 90s commercial. Just kidding. <laughs> Speaking of commercial, the, we're, a quick break for quick a 90-second 90, 90 90 sponsor. We're going to be funny with it. But this couldn't be a better – don't skip this. For the first time in my life, do not skip this. Chris, why don't you explain who we're working with now as one of our sponsors? This is, like, crazy to me that this is even happening. So one of our main sponsors is PriceCharting.com. Uh, you guys probably all are familiar with price charting, video game price charts. They now go by PriceCharting.com. Uh, um, so they're sponsoring the next three episodes that we do. So we're probably going to have full term. Full term, yeah. So we're going to have quite a bit of sponsors with sponsorships with them and doing some trade off sponsor stuff as well. So it to me is the most fantastic term. Like we've I've only had one other sponsor. And I don't need to say name names where I was like this couldn't have been more perfect for our show for what we do. What do we do on our show? If you don't know, besides this channel, we're out there game hunting every weekend of our lives using price charting every minute every day all the time sending screenshots look at this look at this this is the value of this when we sell and whatnot this is what this stuff goes for on video game price charting or on price charting so this when when you kind of worked this because chris is kind of the one who worked this magic and happening of this we were super super excited and i couldn't be more thrilled like this is our this is a sponsor like we're working with price charting we're going to be on their website they're working with us Beef prior to price charting existing when i used to go game hunting this is probably like 12 years ago i used to literally go to the markets with like printed out uh sold listings from ebay this was prior to them existing they wow. kind of changed the game yeah wow. and because nobody you didn't know value so you had to go off of all ebay obviously what price charting does is they take all that ebay information yep. and they consolidate it so that you can see the values and stuff um we've all been using them for uh video games for years um but the first thing we want to talk about was really that they they recently in the past uh i want to say year spread out their categories you now on there can find comics um they have all the sold listings for comics cards. trading cards which includes like Yu-Gi-Oh, Yu-Gi-Oh pokemon, pokemon. Uh, magic. Magic. magic they even have garbage pail kids which you know i love garbage yeah. pail kids so that's on there um they have uh, big big sports cards, sports cards on there. And they just added, I think, U.S. coins. They have coins on yeah. there. Ooh. Yep. So all that information is on there. So you, if you're looking for X Men One from 1990s, if you want to go on there, type in X Men One now. You can sort and see all the values. Of which, which I think is really cool for it to be in one place because, like us, we're always looking at the swap meet, trying to expand our different things of what we look at. So for it all to be there is beneficial for us. Someone who's like 
doesn't want to have to go to 40 different websites to try to find something out. So for us who are constantly scanning, looking at things, trying to find things. Yeah, and I use it all the time when we're at Golden West. And it's so funny because market. like when you talk like this in sponsors, people are like, you're saying those lines you're supposed to say. This is like literally what we do. Like, yeah. it's, like, it's, like, it's like, I use it all the time. <laughs> Wink. It's like, no, we, no, we actually use do time. use it all the time. Yeah. So. I definitely like looking at like how the um, the markets, how it shows the market data oh, and yeah. all that stuff. Over yeah, they time. now have graded stuff on there. They have new, complete in box, market stuff. So yeah, check them out, pricecharting.com. And stay tuned. We got more coming for you guys after the next couple segments. But to, to move on to the next, they might have Turtles cards in there. I'm not sure. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I would say this might be possibly the most popular of all of these, possibly of these 90s cartoons. I'll jump in because I'm already talking. Um, they went through a lot of changes. I was watching a documentary on them on them recently, and it's crazy how just in like the first season, if you watch the Ninja Turtles, the art style was different than just like a few episodes in because I think they hired a certain animation company that put like a lot of like shine on, on Shredder's face and on like Krang had like a lot of like texture in his look. And as they went on, they got so popular so quick. They were using different voice actors every episode, different voice wow. actors, different art artists to draw these things. There's, so there were so many different iterations of what it looked like, which to me is a testament to the stories because and the likability of the characters, because for it to be that popular with that much behind the scenes crap, so to say, going on, that's huge. That means people really attach themselves to the Turtles or to Splinter or to Casey Jones or to April or whoever it was, Bebop and Rocksteady. So with that out of the way, mm, S, it's S for me. Ninja <laughs> Turtles is S for me. I Man. have to. Yeah, I feel like we're just choosing like the really good ones because this is a solid one. I always loved seeing the Pizza Time shirts and all that type of stuff. It's like branding I, with it was perfect. Top, top notch. Yeah. Top notch. What do you rate it? I'm S. 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 Okay, double S. S. I mean, it's for all the reasons you said, it is the mo probably the most iconic 90s cartoon. I, I feel think. like it has to be. Was it my absolute favorite? Like, if I had to choose between, okay, you can watch Turtles right now and watch X-Men, I probably would personally watch X-Men. Yeah. Not to say that Turtles isn't as good. Yeah, yeah. But I, st I still would put this in an S category. Ooh, it's uh -oh. that good. You, hold on, ladies and gents. This could be another <laughs> possible triple S. I, <laughs> we've only had a couple things. I mean, a quadruple S. Yes. So you have S, I have S. Curtis has S. It lies on you, Ricky. Ricky, don't feel pressure. If it's not S, you don't do it. Don't feel pressured. But <laughs> if it happens, D. my hands are ready to clap. They're it's really an close. F. It's an F. Trick. What is it, Ricky? Is it an S? It is. It is an S. It has to be an S. Yeah. But I, I think but that I'm with him. I, if I had to choose X Men over over Turtles, yes. I would choose it. But we both went ass on yeah. X-Men. Well, it's, fun, <laughs> it's funny because, I mean, for video watchers of the podcast, even just seeing this image, 90s cartoons with the Turtles logo, it couldn't look more at home. Like, that, that is 90s cartoons, right? I think Agreed. it is a, a defining, fun, you know, like we said, X-Men was the defining, like, oh, it's that, like, it, I'm cool. Turtles is, like, the ultimate, like, whoa, 90s. It you know, that cool so character suit. Whoa, cool. 90s. <laughs> I like the 90s. All right, here we go. Next one. I, I, I tried to go not all super popular ones. Who has even watched this one? The 90s mask. I know I me and Ricky it. have. A little bit. Curtis? A little bit. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll, Ricky, why don't you go first then? Give it a jump it in. I mean, I enjoyed it, but if. <laughs> you can be brutal, bro. That's the whole point. I'll give it a C. <laughs> I like okay. it, but I was, it wasn't like one of my favorites. Okay. I just think if it was on, I'd watch it. Okay. Christopher, oddly staring at the screen. <laughs> I'm trying to remember it. I mean, obviously, I remember the movie. Well, if you didn't remember it that much, that means you didn't like it that I much. I didn't like it that much, so I'm going to have to go D just to spread this out. My goodness. <laughs> a little lower than I was thinking. Uh, the only time that I ever remember the mask is only because of the iconic Jim Carrey, but not the animation style of it, because the animation style of it just kind of was like whatever. for you. Yeah, I would say like C. Okay. I'm going to go B, but strictly based off nostalgia and memory because it wasn't necessarily the show was that great but the memories attached to it and this was always on after surf team ricky and i surf team then to ricky's house and while we're switching off ricky go takes a shower the mask is on i go take a shower the mask is still on and the funniest <laughs> part about it as embarrassing this is there was a show that came on every time after the mask we were in high school and we would sit there and watch it until we left for school bananas and pajamas 100% the most. Yes. Bananas and Oh, it's pajamas. like a four-year-old show. 
Oh, dude. It's literally like a four-year-old show. And we would watch that together after the mask, it would come on. So for me, it was more for the setting around it. So I'll go B. But I think it's falling. <laughs> I, I think it's dropping itself. Oh, it's so good. Pretty, why, why is it banana pajamas C. on here, dude? Yep. That's an S tier. Bananas and pajamas would be. Let's go. Let's get Did Chris. it have Jim Carrey's voice I don't in the mask? think so. Oh, but I, was I, the voice I, of it? I don't want to say no. Did but it sound like Jim Carrey though? Probably. You, you I mean, it? people are yeah. pretty good at imitating. Let's get. I, let, let's all watch Chris's face get excited. Ren Ooh. can't stand. Look at that <laughs> smile on him. I love it. Audio so listeners much. are missing out on that glory. I yes. love it so much. Okay, go ahead. Give it to us. What you got? You start. Oh, this is the S's of S's. This is one of my favorite cartoons of all time. Is this I mean, possibly I, your highest on this list? I mean, I loved X Men too. I kind of wish I'd rank Turtles a little lower. <laughs> never say that again. This is, this is just such a solid S, just for the art style. I love just how it was like very deranged. It's like dark. There was like so much weird stuff. It was very adult. Like if you go back yeah. and watch this now, I mean, it is beyond adult. It was very kind of like cutting edge, pushing yeah. the limits. But I don't know all the fart jokes and all that stuff. Like that just like tickles me. So tickles I love you. It. Yeah. Tickles you. <laughs> Funny, <laughs> it tickles me. <laughs> Ricky, what you got? Uh, for me, uh, would you give it? Yes. Yes. Don't easy. worry about what he said. You rank it where you want to rank it, bro. I I liked it a lot, but I didn't watch it enough to like love it. Okay. Like, so me, I'm like. Bro, brutalize it for me. Do brutalize it. it. I'm gonna be okay. It's, it's right. great. It's a great Dang. show. I loved it, but it's just I didn't have cable. <laughs> I'm curious what you like think of this one. So I'll be honest. Uh, my opinion on this is, back in the day, I didn't really care for it. Now I love it. So I have to find that fine balance of where I put it. I think I'm with Ricky overall a B for me, but I actually think it was ahead of of my time, like. You're a few years older than me. I think if I had a few more years on me, I would have enjoyed some of the humor a little bit better. I think I was still in that slight stage of like more like the Disney style cartoons. Yeah. And I still like the dark, like, you know, X-Men stuff. But I don't think I was so in touch yet with like the poopy fart. Happy, happy, joy, joy, wow. cinnamon toast, man, all that stuff. Yet, like, did this come out in '92? I want to say, I think so, because I have some Something T-shirts like and stuff. Yeah, but so it played through my childhood probably the too. height of it. So I would have been 11 at that time. So I think right at that 10, 11 year old age is when you get into like the poopy fart yes. joke stuff. And it, like I said, it tickled me. Like watching this as a 10, 11 year old <laughs> was just like, oh, Everything. like you felt like it was bad. Like yeah. you shouldn't be watching it. Yeah, it was like that. Okay. And so I loved it for that reason. <laughs> so that was S B B Curtis. Ah, solid A, man. I was a Nickelodeon kid. Way over okay. Disney for sure, man. I would be playing like all those type of like uh Hey Arnold's Rugrats the, or whatever. Yeah, cat dog. And then it kind of reminded me of a little bit more on the Cartoon Network side of like Courage the Cowardly Dog, yes. the dark style of it. So I would say A for I, me. I like that too that everybody in here has a little bit different like range of what we watched because it's so easy if you get everyone with the exact same taste in like 90s cartoons, people are like, well, I didn't have cable, so I had this, or I didn't have this channel, so I think this is a good mix up. So you said what, Curtis? I said A. So A, S, B, B. I think that's a high B, low A. That's a mass. Mid A. That's a <laughs> <laughs> we catch it. So, so far, Turtles is number one, and X-Men is just right below it. I'm gonna mix it up and go with DuckTales. Ooh. I'll start with this one. So, funny enough, DuckTales and Chippendales is on here later, too. I thought these were both like, middle 90s like shows but then i looked them up they came out in the 80s and like barely made it to 1990 so it still counts as you know 90s it was in the 90s um i'll say as far as like the disney style the disney afternoon type shows you know there's tailspin there's a bunch more um most people would put this as as the top of the tip top this came out before chippendale rescue rangers um I loved it. It was one of those shows where I was at that stage as a kid to where my excitement levels were up when a show would come on. So this would come on and I'd immediately, you know, put on the sunglasses and sing the song and act stupid and jump on the bed. Absolute, absolute S for me. I have to. This is this is so much defining memories watching this show. Curtis? 
<laughs> Dude, you may, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna crush your dreams. That's okay. Here. I don't care. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. When this thing would come on, I would, I would just change the channel. Uh, <laughs> you were what? How old? Yeah, I mean, I just, I wouldn't connect with it very often. Like, I would rather just watch like Mickey Mouse and He's all. He's waiting for Blue's Clues to come on. Yeah, I was, <laughs> heck yeah, dude. Hey, that's Steve. a good show. Blue's Clues is a good show. <laughs> hey, I, like I knew one. immediately when you played that, that was song. A good show. That was a really good but show. I'm gonna rank this as a uh, D for Disney. Wow. wow. <laughs> Just, just replace the D in DuckTales with an F. <laughs> oh, dang, Curtis. All right, Ricky, what you got? Oh, bro, this is S tier all the way. This show even aged beautifully to me it because did. my kids love it. I, I prefer this over the new one any day, like, but it's so good. This, and the new one's not bad. The new one's not bad, but this is just so good. Everything, the storyline, every show was like great for me on this. Oh, so I just good. watched Super Do the other day. And let's Super be real. Do. Uncle Scrooge is living all four of oh, our dude. lives. Let's be he real. Is. He's climbing for money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Say what you want about him. So, oh, I Chris. Um, I did like this one a lot. And Whenever you start like that, I know you're dropping <laughs> a bomb. <laughs> don't I'm get not me wrong. as far down as Kurt. I liked it. <laughs> I did like it. Is it S for me? I don't know. It never okay. really did it as much. I watched, again, a ton, a ton, a ton. Don't but I would, give it, I would give it a solid B. Oh, okay. like payback for Ren Stimpy, isn't it? Yeah, I <laughs> bomb this. <laughs> so wait, that's B. B. Oh, you idiot, Curtis. D. D. S. S. So that puts it at like a, a low A, high B. B. I low think it's like a, a B. Word. I tried. No I tried. Way. Oh, no, I just moved the cartoon thing. All right, here we go. Ready? I tried, guys. What'd you say? Like a C. If this is not going to be below the mask. B. I couldn't even get myself to do it. I'd punch it's one of you guys. This is all guys. a B. Maybe right. high B. Here we go. Hey, Arnold. Oh. That's me. That's Curtis. Why don't you start? As you're a Nickelodeon boy, dude, 100 percent S tier. I loved Gerald. I loved Arnold. I loved the old, the whole New York scene of being playing like that baseball. Yeah, it was cool. Oh my gosh! Every single I could watch this over and over and still be happy. You know, so that's S tier for me. I didn't watch it as much as I would like to admit. So I will gracefully, because I want to respect it for you, I could give it a grade. But I'm going to plead the fifth because I don't want to ruin it for you guys that that watched it more because I didn't watch it enough. What did Curtis give it? An I S? got S, yeah. And I mean, A this S. has got to be a late 90s <laughs> show. I remember watching it a little bit, but late 90s for me, I'm probably in high school at that point. So, oh, bro. Like, I've seen it. You grew up, yeah. That's what I was grown up. I know Peter Pan was all grown up at that time. <laughs> okay. So I probably should plead the fifth, but I have seen it enough that I'd, I'd probably give it, give it a B. It's a, it's a decent show. B, B. S. Oh, I watched it, but every time I watched it, I turned it off. Ooh, <laughs> let's, let's go, go Ricky! Just Finally, a mean for side. F. F. F for me. Ricky <laughs> hates it. I hate this show. Let's go. We got some honesty. So let me just start sorry, where. Sorry uh, to the people. Let that me like start people. where he wishes that it. he was honest <laughs> about that. <laughs> Drag it. Yeah, like, I think it's like right there above the mask. We're gonna have to speed round these next couple. Okay, speed round. We'll go fast. <laughs> Ready for this? Bobby's World. Absolute 100% S, one of my favorite shows of all time. Howie Mandel, beautiful acting, Howie. beautiful Double. accents, wonderful. If you were a kid who had any sort of imagination, this was the show, S tier. I loved it. Loved Howie Mandel and the way, I just loved the way yeah. they did. What did they do? Go back and forth between him and real life yeah. and then the show? Oh, out. Yeah. It was so good. Um, a. A. Okay. I don't have any say in this one. Okay. So. Solid A. Ooh, okay. AAS. That's a good ranking, my friend. Yeah, that was a good show. That's a solid I kind of forgot about it. We'll go that. fast for you, Curtis. Ready? Please do. Beavis and Butthead. Ricky. Ooh, that's a solid A for me. Yeah. Beavis and Butthead. It's I'm with you. Day. This is an S category for me. I, I love knew you'd say Beavis yes. and Butthead. I oh, my gosh. I love this so much. In the same line as Ren and Stimpy. Just like so cutting edge and kind of like dirty. TV for my bunghole. Yeah, so good. <laughs> so good. What S. I find interesting is... Due to Ren and Stimpy, I feel like I wasn't there with a lot of that adult humor, but with this, I was. And I think it's because I watched it at a certain time in my life at, in Yuma, Arizona with my sister, with her boy, husband at the time, and it connected with me. A. A. Nice. I'm an A. Oh, I like that. Okay. So that's a, high, that's a good A. That's a What'd really you get? Good a. 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 I would that's literally that's, just laugh because he's like, <laughs> that's like a high A. All right, ready? <laughs> I used to love that laugh. Batman the Animated Series. This yeah. is tough for me. I'm going to say the last two. I'll just go because I'm already yapping my mouth. S plus 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 plus. This was your one. The most impactful 90s show. It changed so much. Even Ninja Turtles itself later in the seasons changed the animation style and the looks of the Ninja Turtles to have more sharp eyes to resemble more of this noir, this dark look. One of the best things that ever happened in animated. Mark Hamill, 
the acting, the story of Poison Ivy and Harley Quinn. It, S, S, plus, plus, plus. Go ahead, Chris. Me? Yes. Uh, S. Yeah. I mean, this one, man, it was dark. It was good. Yeah. I loved it. Um, the, by far the best Batman series, too. Okay. I'm all you. of them. Yeah. So, S. Okay. S. Best Batman series. Truthfully. Is Batman going to take gonna it? I'm not going to put it up there with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, so I'm going to say A. Wow. Dang, yeah. Curtis. He did it just to spite. Wow. Is this, it's the, is this because of the app? It's an app. <laughs> you, you don't want to call that now. I didn't know no, I know. wouldn't know. All right, here we go. I have honest opinions here, huh, <laughs> this Ricky? Is like second place. <laughs> All right, last one, Chippendale's Rescue Rangers, Ricky. Oh, I love this so much. It's it's uh it's S. Okay. It's that it's really good. Yeah. And I enjoyed the new movie too. It's, it's just so good. This is in line with DuckTales for me. I put it as a B. I like it. I watched it a ton. Nice. B. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if I could shove one up Chris's butt. No, I'm kidding. If I could shove one up there with Batman, it would be Chippendale. This was one of my favorite things in history. I know the whole backstory of Disney wanted something that they, they drew a whole different art style of random characters. They wanted it to be successful with already uh, made characters in line with the Disney world. So they put Chip and Dale in there who only appeared in like three Disney shorts as main characters before. I know the whole history on this crap favorite. The intro theme song is the best one too. Sing it. Sometimes some crimes go slipping through the clacks. But you don't know that? <laughs> I don't even remember. What? Ch -ch -ch <laughs> it's been a long time. Yeah, Chris, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna vote on this one, but you he should do. Watching Beavis and Butthead at the time. Watching, What's the top one? We do it at the end. Wait. So the top, I think, was Turtles, and the lowest. No shame in here. The mask. But all of these were pretty much. S's and A's and B's. Solid. Let's go Let's back in the go. day, 90. Art, Wait, art. Arnold didn't make it to the bottom? Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Agree or disagree? Wow, back-to-back -back games. Let's go. Game One of our things. time, game time, game time. All right, Curtis, <laughs> I want to be triggered. I want you to say something where the audience is going to be like, oh my God, will they answer that? <laughs> no, I don't. I'm just kidding. All right. If you don't know us, the like, audience, <laughs> we have our thumbs up for green and red at home, and we'll we'll say who's the thumbs up for green and red at home. Red Curtis, at home. Did I say that made no sense? Thumbs down for home. <laughs> anyway, what? we'll say it. <laughs> I think Curtis is slick Lexia right now. Yo, it's a little hot, but you know how it goes. Anyway, we're gonna start off with our first one. Beat 'em up games get repetitive fast. Hmm. Thumbs up. Agree. For the majority. Oh, for the majority. I'm not going to say all of them. Yeah, we're going to throw them all into a little thing. So why do you think that? Well, there are a lot of beat em up games that do it right. Let's say Scott Pilgrim versus the world. There's a lot of RPG elements. There's a lot. River City Ransom, I think, is one of the best early iterations we got of a beat em up done in a art, in a style, not an art style, in a style that really pushes a narrative of like storytelling and getting your girlfriend. But it's like a continuing story and reading books to, to gain new move sets, you know, stone hands or acro circus or whatever it is. But I think when you play most beat em ups, they're fun, right? A generic beat em up. They're very fun, right? We can name you know, Knights of the Round, great game. Uh, final, even, fight. final fight. Final fight. Double, double, double dragon. dragon. Streets of Rage, Double yeah. Dragon, all the great games. But they do. the question was repetitive, right? Yes. Yes, they do get repetitive. And I will f beat them with a smile on my face, but I'm not necessarily dying to go back and play them. There's only one that I am dying to go back and play, which is Double Dragon. Which Double one? Dragon 2. I can play NES? that game. Uh, yeah, NES. Oh, I can wow. play that one over and over and over again. Wow. That is one of my favorite games. Double but Dragon D's nuts. But like, as far as the Hilarious. repetitiveness, other than that game, like Final Fight and, and any, of the, any of them, yeah, they, it's just the same style game with different characters. I feel like Ricky? so. It is repetitive. I, I agree. I, with I was gonna say Final Fight, but I like I love those games, but they are repetitive, and my finger hurts at the end because you're literally pushing the same two buttons yeah. over and over. What about Turtles for you guys? Oh. I know you love that. Game. I That's love a it. I love yeah. it, and I, I love Batman Returns. I mean, I, I definitely love the games, but I'm not as dying to go play them to get like it, put it this way. I am, but I need some time. Yeah, give me like four months, and I'll go dive back into it and beat it. Right. I think where most beat 'em ups fail or flounder is repetitive enemies. Because when yes. you have repetitive enemies and you see them on every level, that's when you feel like, am I doing anything different? I feel like it's such a mashing simple... Mashing buttons. You're just mashing. <laughs> oh, that's like yeah. Kid Nicky. It's just one button and you're like spinning, spinning the over thing. Over and over and over. A little spin move is a good move. That is a good All move. All right, this is going to go a little bit more off topic, but it's me. Water has no taste. Water has no taste. 
<laughs> I'm, I, it's a funny one. Dude. <laughs> wait, wait. It has taste. So would I say yes or no? You would say, I would say no. I I'm say gonna, thumbs down. I'm saying yes. Okay, so me, so we have two thumbs down. Ricky and I say it has, it does have taste. I, I, it Chris, does. Oh, all water has no taste. Yeah. Oh, no, so I disagree. It does have taste. Okay, we all agree. Can, yes. can we all agree on this unanimously. I might be the only one here. Arrowhead is the worst drink in the world. It's, it's, it's disgusting. Oh my gosh, it's terrible. <laughs> it's like drinking rust. I'm telling you. Like, I cannot even worst. drink that. I, I can only drink it know. ice. It has to be like ice so I, so I don't feel it's it. Like, it ta- even ice, it tastes warm yeah, and it tastes like metally in my mouth. Dude. I've said this to so many people and nobody has ever agreed with me. They're like, no, oh Arrowhead's fine. Like, I agree 100%. 100% wrong, dude. It's terrible. <laughs> now, Fiji? Fuji? Fiji, Fiji, Fiji. 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 I don't know now. Beto, Like there's there's really good good water in L.A. water. Ooh. Oh yeah, <laughs> out of the faucet. It's oh. terrible. Yeah. Uh, don't, don't do that I'll, I'll here, this I've uh, seen what you, goes into those water uh, oh, reservoirs. Yeah. Don't, don't don't don't. You know what's man. crazy? I would rather drink tap water than drink Arrowhead water. From That's LA? how bad it is. Well, uh, one time I have a funny quick story. I was out doing meter reading. I used to be a meter reader for uh, my job that I was at, and we, you know, you go park your car and you go walk around for eight hours. You go into people's house, you go check their electric meter and leave. And you'd park your car, go do four hundred houses. At the end of the day, you come back. It was one of those brutal, like hundred degree days where I'm just like dying. Don't have any more water. It's like hundred degrees. I'm like, forget it, dude. Like nobody's home at this house. I don't see any cars. I'm just gonna turn on the hose in the front yard and just start chugging. And I start chugging this water. I get super deep into like probably a gallon into my system. And I'm like, whoa. And I take a breather and I'm like, dude, that tasted weird. Like that tasted not good. <laughs> and I'm like, I've had some bad tap water, but something's wrong with this. And I, I look at the hose and where I'm chugging, chugging from. And I look down like two feet and it's connected to a miracle grow like powder. <laughs> Yo, no way he's drinking just basically like carcinogens. Dude, <laughs> straight up, dude. Just sucking it down. <laughs> sucking it down. I'm like, oh I called my, my boss God. immediately. I'm like, uh, dude, what do I do? He's like, come into the office. Call poison control. Let me <laughs> keep... No, they didn't call anybody. They were like, let's try to keep this under the system and see what happens. I just started chugging a ton of water and eating when I got there. Did you feel sick? I didn't feel sick, but there were certain parts of my body that were like this big. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, yeah. Yo, that's crazy. All right, we're going to go on to one that might be a little bit more triggering, but it's going to be a good one. Uh-oh. Collecting five screw or three screw proves that collectors will buy anything will buy anything just because. Ooh. 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 Okay, so if you don't know when you're listening out there, five screw and three screw is basically quite literally buying the same NES game, but one has five screws and one has three screws, and value goes up a lot of times if there's five screw. That you're saying it proves that we'll that collectors will buy anything. Yes. Agree or disagree, please. I agree. I agree. <laughs> I agree. I'll disagree. Okay, so we got two agrees from Ricky and I. Chris, you disagree. Why do you disagree? Well, I'm trying to think on the five screw versus three screw. I think there is a reason why people are collecting that. I believe they are earlier versions of some sort. Because they're more expensive. <laughs> yeah, there is a reason why. And I'm not a five screw or three screw collector. Of yeah. that, but I think that there is a reason. Like when it's verbalized, I'm like, wow, we are dumb. I just saw you look at him. Switch it, Chris. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Those little nuances, I respect it. I do respect yeah. the tiny little nuances of that. So yeah, I'll agree with why people. I, I, I can understand it. Ricky, what are your thoughts? Uh, I mean, I would want to buy it just because, you know, if, 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 it, if it's worth a lot of money, you kind of want to do it. It's that one thing like you're like, oh, I don't have this one. I need to get it. That's it, just the collector's mentality. You always want everything. Like, I don't know how it is. No, I, you're right. I, I want like weird, the weird stuff like Mega Man 5. I remember watching Caleb's video. That that different Don't bring variant. Up on this oh, I'm podcast. sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, sorry. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's, now it's, I want the Mega Man Five, the the, the, well, the with Capcom, and I'm it's just kind of like, like oh, I should go look for that now. It's kind of like the Left Bros versus Right Bros, yes. Super Mario. But, it, it, but that's an earlier version, I believe. But, is the Left Bros? Yeah, yeah. they're just different print yeah. runs. But, but same models. game. But there's that's my thing. It's like people want to collect that. Like I I legit want it. Like I want. I just say it like because that's what I would do. I yeah. want to buy it. So we agreed on this one. Right? Did, I forget what we did. I, I, Ricky wasn't sure. He held up something and went on something. But that's okay. <laughs> Your mind is as you go. I, 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 I put that we would buy anything. Collectors yeah. would buy anything. So, yes. Oh, yes. I would buy anything. Now I'm confused. Don't worry. It doesn't matter what you almost picked at this point. I was okay this time. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's stroking out now. It is interesting and almost like not sad, but it is weird to think about us as collectors, what we'll pay 
nobody get offended because I do it too for like the dumbest thing, right? Like it's true. We do. Yeah. Oh, we were talking about it at the convention. I, I bought these shirts and they're newer and they're like, you know, $20 Star Wars shirts and they like have these crazy graphics. And I'm like, Ricky, how stupid is it if this had one stitch instead of two? It'd be like a $700 shirt. Like, it's crazy. how stupid is that actually? We do it. I mean, I'm not hating because we literally are the ones oh, buying yeah. these we expensive are the, shirts. Yeah. <laughs> it makes all the sense in the world to me. You saw it. <laughs> it does, but it doesn't. It does. No, because it's the authenticity of it to me. It's the rareness and the authenticity versus the other one. Yeah, but bootlegs like, have gone up now too. So what's your argument on that, boy? <laughs> I like bootlegs too. Because bootlegs have gone up the roof too. So. Uh, all right, this one is the one I did. It's going to be Street Pass for Nintendo 3D, 3DS was the weirdest feature. I don't even do anything with. So Street Pass. The, the concept of what? that was like you were like you'd have your 3DS, you're walking around, and then you can exchange information with other people who had a 3DS in their pocket. Well, let me tell you that right now. I always look at marketing in the simplest ways. If, if someone has to explain something to you more than once, it's usually not a good idea, right? It's like a joke. It's like a movie. If someone has to explain it to you and you've already watched it, seen it, been pitched it, and you're like, wait, I don't get it. Tell me again. I don't even know what that is because I never did 3DS. And guess what I'll say? It sounds stupid. Stupid, <laughs> yeah. dude. It's a weird feature. That's why. So I do, do people still use it? I don't know, man. But I, just oh, so I never used it, so I'd be tough to like say I, yes. Or I no. never used it, but I feel like for like the Pokemon community, you know how they trade and do all that kind of stuff. That would have been perfect. But I, I wasn't a 3DS guy that much. So coming but from this, whatever we're rating, yeah, I'm giving that thing be, a giant thumbs down. Whatever, so what, just a rating. Down. <laughs> <That> <laughs> just, whatever that was. <laughs> <laughs> which is, hey, man, I didn't. I just. I said it was weird. <laughs> now, wait. <laughs> Even Curtis didn't know what it was. Wait, 3DS community. Sorry. Sorry, guys. Wait, no. Sorry. No, I'm, you I'm take that get, one. I'm starting to get you into it. You take that one to the grave, 3DS okay, we'll community. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, all right, we're going to go on our next one. Ninja Gaiden is better than Shinobi. Ooh, that's rough. Yes. I agree. Mm -hmm. I'm a huge Shinobi fan, man. Shinobi's pretty good. And I only really loved the first Ninja Gaiden. Like, really loved. I'm still going to agree with you guys, though. I think it is better overall. Shinobi on in the, you know, earlier days, you know, let's say Sega Master System days. Ooh, but then again, Shinobi on the Genesis. Holy moly mazuli. The arcade version, in my opinion. They, was so the they best. play completely different for anyone yeah. that hasn't played them. Ninja Gaiden is much more fluid, and dare I say it, plays a lot more ninja-like, right? There's a lot more, like, swoopiness and archy feelings and feels more fluid as a ninja would move. Yeah. Shinobi generally is a more stiff walking, kind of like straightforward, mm. almost like Codename Viper. That jump where you would like go up and your legs kick over. Ninja Gaiden? No, that was in Shinobi. Oh, yeah. Like that oh, yeah. flip. Oh, oh, oh my God. So Shinobi was like flip a tuck. That. I mean, I mean uh, Ninja Gaiden was like a tuck. Yeah, it was a tuck. A tuck flip. Shinobi was like, woo, with the legs. Like, like the <laughs> legs and the like dynamics of that were incredible. Oh, It had this man. like looping, floating feeling to it. Both great game series overall, but I think I'll agree that Ninja Gaiden is better on the overall, even though I'm very flat with that reasoning what about for you ricky what's your thought uh i don't know i i, I just like ninja Gaiden a lot better but if i if i literally had to talk about it i'd just go strider bro i'm sorry wow <laughs> that's not the question oh, either politician just went full changed. politician on us <laughs> what is your politician. thoughts on the border crisis I don't know, but I love tacos. Like, <laughs> like, like, what does that have to do with anything? <laughs> it's like the first thing I thought of when you was like, I really want to play yeah, right I was now. in like mid drink and I was just choked when you said that. <laughs> Ricky's just straight up, he's like, he's all, I don't really have a but I love Strider. <laughs> like, I love that, Ricky. Chris, uh, you, that's what you're trying to get over that. Pretty good. Um, on oh. the consoles, I liked Ninja Gaiden a lot better, but in the arcade, stri stri or not, no, I'm thinking Strider. Strider, <laughs> let's be real. Shinobi on the arcade was incredible. That game was so, so good. But well, I just played so much Ninja Gaiden, so I like it better. Well, let's just put Ricky into it really quick. Is Strider the best out of all those? I'm going to say yes. That Strider would yeah, be Yeah, Strider's the best from those three. <laughs> Strider is pretty good, but I still like Ninja Gaiden. Okay, okay. Yeah. All right, we're going to go on to our next one. It's going to be Xbox 360 controller was the best controller in the early 2000s. Oh, 100%. Early 2000s. Early 2000s. Guys, really oh, so think I got back, a thumbs up from Riff. So it's really just Xbox 360 versus PS3? Well, basically in that, you yeah, can almost GameCube, say that genre. Yeah. Oh, GameCube, yeah. yeah. GameCube was yeah. a great controller. I'm going to agree with it. 
Yeah, like that it. was a great controller. Yeah, for 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 that time, it was a great controller. I love the size of it, just like to be able to put it in your hand. Like it was such a good transition well, from that big old fat one. We spent so much time on it too, and it was comfortable. Like I never had, dude. I used to get hand cramps with with the regular Xbox playing Halo. Oh yeah, the Duke. Yeah, the Duke. But that <sighs> that regular that Xbox 360 controller was was clutch. I, I think that was one of the best controllers for like from when it came out till it ended. I mean, that was like yeah, it was legit. I think to this day, one of the most highly praised controllers i think xbox has done a really good job since the 360 being like pretty dominantly loved by everyone like not even if you love the consoles but the controllers themselves i feel like are pretty overwhelmingly supported it's like okay these are great controllers i think the xbox one is one of the best controllers ever as well yeah which is designed pretty yeah. similarly to the yeah. xbox 360 they changed it a little bit yeah but i almost think the 360 might be the best controller of all time it has more round yeah. edges yeah it's so comfortable in your hand might be the perfect controller. I think. Ooh. Yeah. Yo, that's a that's a pretty good case, right there. Ooh, the next ranking, ranking controller. All right, that'd be a, right, that'd be a Ooh, very I good. I like one. that. Yeah, I have a Super Nintendo controller good. tattooed right here. <laughs> Different types of game hunting. What setting do you thrive in? Ooh, oh, I like this. So Curtis brought this up to me the other day, and I was like, "Stop talking, podcast <laughs> conversation." So when you watch, you know it. it this is a I think this is super interesting Curtis because when you watch so many different game hunting channels let's take you know some of the more prominent ones like Chase Up is the Right Price Phoenix Resale yeah. Pixel Game Squad uh, Retro Rick everyone hunts in different places and everyone thrives in different places we're the swap meet guys yeah. uh, Caleb does really well at pawn shops Retro Rick does really well at his fake flea markets I'm going to say that to all of you right now <laughs> he calls them flea markets but they're antique stores retro Rick um, <laughs> yes and it's one of those situations where what do you think is the best way to get or conventions right that's huge for a lot of youtubers as well what do you think is the most dominant best way to find video games or at least where we are because we've seen it all and i could speak for a lot of the other guys i know what they would say too but what are your thoughts when you say thrive do you mean like what situation we like me personally i thrive in yeah like or what just is the, for yeah. people the in best general? right now you you're chris what is the best place to go get, get video games but we're talking obviously you'll go to conventions you're going to see a lot but a lot but i'm talking price mixed with quantity what's available best way to get games um, I mean, I personally, it depends on what I'm trying to achieve. If I'm trying to get cheap, like games possibly to resell and stuff, though, you can't beat the flea markets. But when I'm at a convention, like, and our, I'm, our flea markets, I will say that because Retro Rick calls them flea markets for him. It's more like antique stores, but they are called flea markets out there. Yeah. And I'm, <laughs> yeah. When I'm just being honest <laughs> when I'm there hunting. I mean, I'm kind of like looking for whatever, you know, yeah. any kind of game. But I do love the convention scenes because I do like there. I'm more specific on what I might be looking for. Yeah. And usually like some high end games. Like I'm not going to find those at Golden West. So I don't know. Have you seen Ricky and I game hunt? <laughs> it's true, dude. I Honestly, <laughs> I'll speak for Ricky and I, man. I don't get it. I don't get it. I'm in a big giant group <laughs> group chat. I won't say the name of the group chat because I just <laughs> laughed out loud. It's a bad name. Um, I'll say it's called F Cancel Culture. <laughs> we're in a group chat and all those. So shout out to everyone in there. And they were all talking about conventions and this and that. And, and we brought it up and they're like, Riff and Ricky literally are basically at a convention. Every weekend we walk away with tons of stuff at the best prices you can think of. I don't get it. We've said it a million times. I won't talk about it again, but for the sake of the video, swap meets for us always have been just king. king. Yeah. What about you, Curtis? I would say uh, for me, it used to be garage sales. Now it's swap meets. Like, I feel like I thrive in it. I would say that your margins are way better with garage sales. I mean, you go into like little, little Miss Granny's house and she doesn't know what she has. And I'm not saying that I was young when I did it, sure. but you know, you jacked. Would yeah, you, I know, would right? Would you include estate sales in that? Because I, I do love estate sales. I would say really estate sales. Estate okay, sales. but well, I'm Curtis saying like margin. Estate sale hunt. Margin wise, I would say estate sales too, but I mean, you have to pay up a little bit more. Yeah. But I mean, to find things, you'll find like at a estate sale, there's collectors out there. You know? the, the only thing I find with the flea markets now is there is so many people hunting out there. It's like a mad grab to go in, find what you can find. Yeah. It's not leisurely like no. it used to be. No, it's <laughs> scary. Like, there for the run. Everybody, everybody run. run. It's like a mad scramble to grab I as much stuff as you can. I don't know how it doesn't affect Ricky and I. It's never affected our finds. But you guys are there early. 
We're the, we're vampire hunters. You are vampire hunters. He gets there before us. I yeah. per, always preferred. Let me just say, back in the day when I first started hunting, rolling in at like nine thirty, ten o'clock. Oh, okay. And literally like back Saturday. In my day. <laughs> back in my day. <laughs> These kids but were do dotting on their TikTok. <laughs> 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 but no, what it is now is it is a five in the morning, dark, mad scramble, find what you can get, be out of there by eight thirty. Yeah. It's still enjoyable, but it's not a leisurely stroll by any means. You know the weird thing is we'll show up late. And still, like, get weird stuff because some of those guys don't offload till later. So there's two periods. I sometimes if you come late and I'll roll in at like nine thirty ten, you guys are long gone. The vampire hunters are gone, and <laughs> there's stuff that comes <laughs> out afterwards that that was missed. So, yes, you, but it's yeah. much fewer and far between. You're not getting the huge big scores. You know where I heard like the best place to find video games for cheap? SoCal Gaming Expo. Ooh. I heard that's gonna be <laughs> sick. But if you know what, one of the best things to do when you're out there sourcing and looking at the flea market, you know what you need. Pricecharting.com. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just two R's. You like fat. that? You yeah, like that? That's good. All right, all right, so listen up. So listen up. We're working with Price Charting. Amazing, amazing. Been a, a company that we've been using long before we've been talking with them. Everybody in our scene uses it. It's one of the best ways to price out. You know, video games is what they were m- most notably known for in the beginning, but now they're expanding to cards, coins, tons of things, comics, everything, just, just raking up the system of different things um, that they're working with. But, um, We've been working with them, and we wanted to touch one important topic each time while we're talking to Integrate. Don't skip this. I'm telling you, this is all crucial. What is one cool thing that Price Charting told us? Hey, we're bringing in. Let your audience know because it's cool. And yes, it is a sponsor, but we're, we're proud to be working with them for this. So they have a couple awesome features. Um, obviously, when you go to their site, you can type in a name and you can search. Uh, they most recently added a uh, barcode scan that you can do, which is Huge. obviously a simple feature. But when you're out at the flea markets... Hunting just to be able to pick up a game scan. You know, you're trying to go through things quick. Now make sure to silence your phone when you do that, though, because nothing <laughs> worse than a noise. With like, you'll be like, Ricky is like the king of <laughs> sucking at that. We're like at a, a flea market, and Ricky's like, let me check if it's it's a good deal, and he'll be like. And I'm like, <laughs> they know you're searching up the game. No, no. You know what? I'm doing that too. I always feel bad. I always try to turn my back. I yeah, don't know something yeah. about that. Or I'll walk away a lot of times, and yeah. I'll go look something up, and then I'll come back. Yes. I just feel bad. You know what? I'm gonna. I'm gonna oh, I, I feel so bad that I'm saying this. I always say, hold on. I have an, my my app that tells me as I have this game. Let me look. And I just search it up. <laughs> <laughs> price charting. I'm like, oh, 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 I already have it. That's what the price is. Too high, you know? um, so they have a barcode scan feature, and they also have a um, an image search now. Huge. Huge. Ooh. Yeah, so you can take a picture. I, I the, That ability to just, instead of having to search, just take a picture. It'll find it for Huge. you. So, uh, search it. So both of those features are awesome. I will say the biggest one to me of those is image search because I recently saw, I think it was either it was either Caleb or Rick um, who we were looking at stuff and I didn't know at the time that price charting was doing that. And someone next to me was like, Hey, you can scan, you can image search on price charting now. And it was either Caleb or Rick who was like super jazz. I'm like, dude, that's fantastic. Because again, there's other, of course, options available to do that, but it's so easy now that price charting has it because you're doing it in one place. And that makes it easier, right? Ease of use. You don't want to be stumbling like us like that when we're out there. Oh, let me check. Oh, if the phone falls over, they can see you're looking. Oh, we're, like, we're like the worst at that. That's why I just walk away. I'm like, I can't do it here. Yes. So please check out pricecharting.com. We'll leave it down below in the description. So thank you for that. But I will say moving forward, I think one of the ones that we're slipping on the most is what Chase kills it on. What? Garage sales. Yeah, we don't do them. Do garage sales, we should. I gave up on them, but it's, it's, there's it's, so few and far between, yes. and you have to drive. And there's people that still score. I don't know. You, you said garage sales, but do you mean estate sales? You do I used to do sales? garage sales out in Lancaster, where Gab like Gabo's kind of located at general area. And dude, I used to kill it out there, man. I mean, when you find stuff at a garage sale, it's usually like the cheapest yeah. steal. Well, you're well ever that's find. why it, garage sales are like you said, very few and far between. But when you find that one, it's like, okay. Because a garage sale is a stereotypical place to put your stuff that you just want gone. You, it, 99% of the time when you go to a garage sale at 11 o'clock and they're done, it's all on the front lawn in a bag. Take, free, don't yeah. want this. Yeah. So it's all the stuff people want moved along. Yes, once in a while you'll go to a garage sale and someone will like, you know, be priced up like with stickers and it's like above you know, what the price charting is on it and you're like, oh gosh. But <laughs> nine times out of 10, you got to do that, and then that's where the trickery comes in of 
to, to how low to let the stuff go for without feeling bad, I think, which we've talked about before. I think this is interesting. We've had friends come along with us to like swap meets. And... Curse is not friends. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we've had your friends out there. <laughs> <laughs> that was up. We, we've had friends come out with us to our swap meets, and like sometimes it may they make them feel kind of out of their comfort zone. Why do you think that is? So th- that's huge. This is a very interesting. Curtis, what a great question. Man. I, know, man, question I, I now, try. I Curtis. try. Oh, All right. Yes. Yeah. So and I, and I say this with serious respect. Some of the best uh, hunters I know, you know, Caleb, Rick, uh, Sit Cooper recently, Cody was out there. These guys were out there with us. And I will say this with all respect, and I mean it. Those guys go to our element, the swap meet, and they're horrible <laughs> at hunting in a swap meet. Because I think, and I say that with love, because I think they hunt the way they expect to hunt at, say, an antique shop or a pawn shop or a garage sale, right? You're not necessarily going to these places, maybe at a garage sale a little bit, but you're not going to have to dig and look. So what happens is you get people going to the swap meets with us, and this is how 90% of people I see hunt at swap meets and fail is they just do this. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. And for audio listeners, they're just peeking, hands in their pockets, kind of peeking around like, mm, guess there's nothing there. You got to walk into every, I don't care if they're selling tools. I don't care if they're selling garbage. You don't think they have it. Do not do the graze over walk. Yeah. That is the walk of shame for Ricky and I that swap me, yep. seeing people do the graze over. We walk in, we dig, we lift up things, we open trash bags. We ask, what's back there? Can I open that? How much? We're moving on. Do you have games? Do you have this? Not even games anymore. It's, do you have anything weird? Show yeah. me anything you haven't pulled out yet. You know, whip it out. When in doubt, pull it out. <laughs> <laughs> yo, yo, I think one of the craziest thing is like this last weekend is kind of like a testament to that because it's like, yo, I was digging through those boxes and I didn't realize that those CD cases that were in there, they Curtis were 3DO some, games and Curtis Sega Saturn. CDs for those yeah. who didn't catch an episode. I mean, yeah. the other thing about our the Golden West that we go to our flea market, I feel, is that we're dealing with like pretty seasoned, experienced like vendors there. When you're dealing with yes. like a Dusty, uh, if you guys know who Dusty is, I'm sure we've talked about He said he's going to come to Co- I mean, SoCal Gaming Expo. Yeah, LA. I mean, this is a guy that's on Storage Wars. He's it sells at multiple different places. He's he knows on our what show he has. Every week. They're great negotiators. A lot of those other vendors that are there we see them time after time they generally have an idea of what stuff is worth you're not getting stuff that you know necessarily the cheapest cheapest um they have a sense of what they're selling you know what i mean like they're willing to give you a deal yes but they are experienced and so i could see that being overwhelming for people if you're coming in yes and you're dealing with some like pretty savvy guys on the other side Yes, That's it's true. not like a, you know a garage sale. It's like, hey y'all, how how you doing? It's like, yo, how much? I'm like four bucks. Move on. Yeah, That's it. and they won't even look at you. <laughs> they won't even look at you. <laughs> like, That's no. it. That's forty bucks. All right, see you next next customer. Yeah, and then next. Dusty to speak of one of our. He's literally one of our favorite sellers. He's become a good friend of ours. Yeah, but he he's is. Hilarious. He's the homie of homies. What up, G? What up, this? But when you see him selling to people. That's it. He's he's straight as it gets. Forty bucks. Will you take? Nah, G. I won't. Yeah, walk away. No. Yeah. Yeah. He'll be like, I'll look it up. The price will go up. Yeah, well, yeah, he says that. yeah, sure. I'll look it up for you. And then the price will go up. And I'm like, dang, that's savage. But he's smart. He's doing it. So- By the way, Dusty's expecting. I know. Oh, yeah, him and Lupe. Really? You know, I truly think we should like make him a gift basket. That'd yeah. be awesome. I bet he doesn't have people that would do that for him. Like, like homies. You know, where's homie G? I think it'd be, it'd be cool. The only hey, thing honestly, is, is Dusty probably has some so baby much single stuff. Stitches? If you gave him more stuff, he'd be like, one day we'll just buy out of more things. You know what Dusty would love? We should literally make him a basket all wrapped nice and just cash. Or, you or know that's what he'd want. Diapers. <laughs> no. Now this is not an interesting question to the same topic. Cash, Where are yeah. you more likely going to run into something that you're never going to see? You know, that we're looking for. I would say it, from what we've been learning is storage lockers, right? Because a lot of these crazy finds that we've been getting at the swap meets, we can technically say they're at the swap meets, right? That's where we're yeah. finding them. But most of those finds are at the swamp meet, but because they bought them in storage lockers. Now, I've said it before, but we have a very big one up because we are in Orange County, California, you know, an hour away from LA. A lot of this Hollywood stuff is getting trickled in week after week after week from animation studios, Hollywood studios, producer studios, collections from people who we recently had one where it was a guy who was like a producer of a puppet master. And he sold his whole collection. And I got all these 80s rock yellow yeah. pages and stuff. I got the cliffhanger script. I got the uh, got Blade the Runner script. script. We yeah. got the I Know What You Did Last Summer reel. I, oh, yeah. I got the Fly script the other day. Dang. Dang. I, yeah, the Fly. Really? Yeah. How much you want to sell it for? 300 Three dollars, perfect. <laughs> Do I? No, uh, our buddy Scott Squatch recently had one. He had Silent Hill. Oh, yeah. Silent Hill. He wanted two hundred though, and I was like, "Dang it!" Yo, but we I, also... I bought mine for like one fifty. I think you had a real. Wow. Yeah. Oh. 
D is it real? Did you say? It's a, yeah, it's the real, the little mini reels. Oh no, not the real. It's the actual like script. Oh, the script. Oh, oh script. Cool. Yeah, Monino. That's probably even more. <laughs> no yeah. joke. Yeah. No, I oh can't yeah. Cross those. I was looking at just even like because like I, I see auctions all the time on estate sales and stuff. They happen to be just kind of displaying it, and then one of them. Like the Golden Girls script sold for like three thousand dollars. That's because it's the Golden Girls, bro. Crazy, dude. Three hundred on the fly might have been a steal. <laughs> yeah. <just> went up. <laughs> <laughs> we bought a convention. Now agree. what? Uh, agree. <laughs> agree. <laughs> so Put that agree. Away. Disagree. <laughs> yeah. So I think this is a fun one too to take people along <clears throat> because, right? You know, we bought SoCal Gaming Expo, right? Huge for us. By the way, you know, we didn't do a follow-up video since then. The announcement from the the reaction from the community was. Unreal, awesome. yeah. Unexpected. You always, you know, think you're gonna find at least 20 trolls in there somewhere who's gonna be like, "Ah, you guys suck, screw you." Guys. You know, this. It was the most loving comment section I've seen in years. It almost, it's very humbling too, because a lot of people are like, you know, I have a hard time accepting compliments. That's always been kind of like weird for me. So, or I guess here's the here's the compliment I've always had a hard time accepting when people like say like you deserve it or you're great. I don't know my brain being, you know, a, a guy who's made mistakes in his life, my brain, you know, that thank you, Jesus, that I, that I moved past that. But a lot of me internally is like, when people tell me I deserve it, I'm always like, well, no, 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 no. I, I, I'm really just a, a regular guy and I've made mistakes in my life. I don't deserve it. I, I'm, it's all by grace. You know what I mean? So I have a hard time accepting those, but seeing those so many was so overwhelming and like heartwarming coming from not just our local SoCal community, but from the community of gaming but now we bought it so yeah. what's next what's our next steps what are we doing what are Ricky, we doing tomorrow Ricky, what Chris? Are we doing? yeah what are the next steps in yeah, your Ricky, process what are you doing? Ricky, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Ricky, it please. was our intervention me and Chris were doing all the work <laughs> Ricky, Ricky what are you doing, out, Ricky. <laughs> are doing yeah Ricky so what's your updates <laughs> updates oh we're still working on the convention <laughs> <laughs> Good old Yo, Ricky. No, no why don't you tell them where we're at what we're actually doing tomorrow uh, so we're going to look at Pasadena tomorrow. Yep. Uh, really the process after, you know, working out the deal, making the announcement was really to find a home and a date. Uh, it was previously at Ontario. Um, the dates didn't necessarily work last year. We also kind of want to go out and look at other venues. There's some really good ones here in LA. And I think I want to jump into that before you finish, keep that sentence going is the reason why not, we might not be staying in Ontario is we don't want to come in here and mix things up, but because we think the only dates available clash with other local expos. And we immediately made a list when we got into this, I said, Chris, I want to make a list of all the expos and their dates because I do, and I reached out to convention owners, I don't want to mess with these people. My last thing is I don't want to come in and be like, hey, we're the guys on YouTube that bought a convention and we got that date. You know, heck no. Heck no. Which, is, thing. which is so important. And um, from doing Retro World for years, yeah. uh, shout out to Retro World Heck yeah, real shout quick. out to Retro World. Next, yeah, next yeah, month, yeah. August 26th, Say it with your chest. Yeah, I got my shirt on. <laughs> but, um, I'm going to blur that shirt out. <laughs> no, please support Chris and Retro World as well if you're in Connecticut area. I really can't yeah, wait to go for the first time, so don't worry. Oh, yeah, and Curtis is coming this oh, year. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Cancel your flights. <laughs> These guys. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but uh, <laughs> it is always super important to not be around dates of other shows. As a courteous, you know, we, we, we know many of these other show owners, um, whether it's John Lester putting on Game On Expo. Joe Alonzo, Really Rad Weekend. Uh, yep. Austin from SEGE. Yeah, all these guys. So try to work within dates. You, again, you don't want to be on the same date. So it's looking at dates, what space works for us. Cost is always, obviously, always a big important factor. Yeah. I mean, like we looked at some of them, like Long Beach. I'll just mention, which was like super pricey, I mean, crazy pricey. out of the picture, just based on the price. So, and, and people need to know that too. Like, take that in consideration. It's because it's so easy to get lost in, right? Like the the viewer, right? And I would have done it too, right? Like as a as an attendee before an owner, right? Like, why don't they just put it here? There's so much more that goes into that I'm learning than why don't they just do it there? Right, because like you said, cost, space, size, availability. We looked at a place that we loved that was in a giant airport hangar. It was like the most cool you awesome. picture ever. Yeah, and we're like, this is amazing. Let's do it. And then they're like, but you have to pay for a power company, and there's no air, and there's no, no so internet. Like, no, they no turned internet. opening the doors. I was like, what? Yeah. Yeah, so there's a lot of factors that go into it. Um, really, I would say we're at the stage of like collecting information, like requests for proposal, RFPs, like let's gather all the information on the venues that we like and then narrow them down. Some don't work, some dates don't work, this building is too big, this one's too small, yeah. and uh, factoring all that information. But 
I would say hopefully maybe within the next couple weeks might have something pinned down. I would say by the time this goes out, I don't like to edit these podcasts, but if we do have a date, I will put it on the screen right now. And if, if you're watching and you're not going, everybody look at the camera. For shame. <laughs> For shame. <laughs> you know, I, I really hope that everyone goes and not just, um, you know, local SoCal people only. But we have some cool uh, things that have been happening, too. We re we talked to a couple people uh, who have reached out since then who are, you know, managers of different people out here in L.A., uh, even though we're not in L.A., we're in O.C. But I think one of the best things we have going for us, and this isn't not to flex on any, you know, event or any other convention, being where we are, when I talk to some of these managers, they're like, wait, SoCal? And they're like, um, these people will come. Because the biggest hurdle always is, you know, flights and hotels and making sure that this and their time. He's like, half of those people, you're not paying for travel. And if you do, you're paying for gas. And half of them aren't even going to want a hotel. They can when, just drive 20 minutes home. When we're looking for guests for Retro World, which is in Connecticut, 50% of the guests that we contact live, yeah. guess where? Yeah. Here in yep. SoCal. Yep. Because of Hollywood, because it's voice actors, yep. you know, all that stuff. Yep. So yeah, guests should be so much easier. We have a lot of really cool ones and, and, and there I'm trying to be very specific about who comes that I think is you know, important to this scene. You know, uh, one of the ones I think, uh, I, I can't lock these people in yet, but I can, you know, kind of say who they are. Some of the voice actors from Sonic X, mm. the actual voice of Sonic and Silver, uh, Amy, uh, Chris Redfield, Joel Valentine from Resident Ooh. Evil. Uh, we might be able to get the whole cast of Resident Evil out there. Yeah. Pokemon. You know, and obviously, what I want to do with it, though, and you better not steal this for Retro World, bro. I'll beat you. <laughs> Yo. any of you other, get out the notes. Any of you other convention owners out there, <laughs> if I see this at your expo, oh, you're dead. <laughs> uh, I want to do playing that game with the actor. Ooh, Who awesome. wouldn't want to play Sonic with Sonic? Who doesn't want to play a round of a couple Resident Evil with the cast right. of Resident Evil? So I already stole that idea. Because we have Terry Torak. I think I mentioned him before. He's the Nintendo World That's Championship. That's different. He's not a voice announcer. actor. <laughs> but what we are doing is... Is he going to play Turok? No, we're flying... <laughs> Yo. Terry Torok. <laughs> <laughs> you like it. You like that. Oh, my God. That's a That's quality dad joke. Turok. Quality dad, dad joke. Play I love Turok it. With Tony Turok. <laughs> All right, what'd you say? So we're flying out. I'm actually going to be having them in briefcases. Um, one of, I think you guys know him, too. His name is Adam. He's in San Diego. But oh, he yeah. had put together a whole Nintendo World Championship set yes. where you can press a button and it plays like seven or eight games at one time. It starts them all at the same time. So you have seven or eight Nintendo set yes. up with Nintendo cartridges, Nintendo World Championship cartridges. And so we're setting that up. Have Terry there to announce that. So, okay, so that's not exactly the same, similar. but yes, yours is cool. Yeah. That's awesome. I do like that. Yeah, I think you should be able to do stuff with people that relate to who they are. Like, yeah. we can have you game hunt with Phoenix Resale and live rip people off. <laughs> 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 Horrible? <laughs> I'm just kidding. My biggest, hey, I, let me say this real quick. Before you say it. Yeah. Caleb, we love Phoenix Resale gets we love so much. Him. I want to have him on and ask him what it's like to be so hated and so loved. That one brought me to tears. He, he, <laughs> he is probably one of the biggest supporters He's of this awesome. podcast. He He's going to be at Retro World this year. Come see him. Wow. We could do that bit. Don't, wow. If you yeah. steal it, you're dead, bro. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what were you going to say, Chris? My, my biggest thing is, um, how have you guys been able to like kind of manage your time since you've been initially added on to owning an expo? Oh, I can God, jump in. Don't, don't even ask. It, uh, you go first. No, go you're stressed. You go ahead. I like <laughs> it. It has been, it is st stressful in a good sense, stress, but mm -hmm. it has added a lot more when there's already a lot on the plate for me, managing five stores and then running the expo. The expo gets very um, uh, it, intense, like a month before the show, like oh, right yeah. now. So, with all the guests and vendors and everything just going on, flights and so much to do. And to add this on, it's just a little bit more on the plate. And obviously, that we don't even have dates yet. Yep. But it's certainly, I'm even questioning myself, like, man, how much I've had to kind of restructure how I manage my day just to, just to incorporate that into it. It's it's a fair amount of work. Curtis, so you want to buy a share? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Put me in. Put me um, in, coach. <laughs> for for me, it's been a lot too as well. I'm you know I'm a very go getter type guy. That's just my personality. So even without the date set, I've been like trying to do every little thing I can to start things. You know, with the social media, with Mikey to to post to, to asking people what they want to being on the phone with voice actor people to be like, are you going to come talking with Gerard? Like, are you going to be able to this? Who can you get for us? How can you get this? Like I'm trying to be as proactive as I can for me. I've always been this way with like all of my work that I do, multiple jobs, multiple things. And I'm always running at 11, 
the whole time. I honestly so, don't. I don't he understand is, how he does it at he's all, crazy. guys. <laughs> and for me, I love the workload too. That's not the thing. It's when I can't, when I look at my emails or whatever, and I can't get to them, and they compound and oh, they yeah. go to the next, and then I'm like, shoot, I'm I can't get to all this yeah. workload. That's that's where I yeah, because your brain is like. I am a workhorse. Let me get to it, but I physically can't. Yeah, and we were talking about it before we come in like today because like you, we're in some group chats and obviously yeah. talking about stuff. And I feel like I know if I send a message out, within five seconds you'll respond. And vice versa, I'm responding to you within five seconds. And then we're like, where's Ricky all day? <laughs> Ricky, what's it like to watch me and Chris work? I mean, I'm not like these guys. These guys are... These guys are 100 percent especially Riff. Actually, both of these dudes, they're crazy. I love Chris is kind of crazy, too. No, they're <laughs> they are literally going all out. Chris is like, send us pictures. Look, look what's in the stores. We got this. We got that. Then you got, uh, uh, we actually went disc golfing the other day, and then Riff couldn't come because he was talking to Chris Redfield. I was like, that's so cool. Yeah, but like, these guys <laughs> are literally going hardcore. I, I'm, I'm talking to con some conventions, but... No. No, Ricky's not, been doing work. We're just messing of course. With you guys. I'm 100 percent messing with you, and everybody works at different paces too. So it's not. Oh problem. yeah, I'm I don't like, expect. I think Ricky's going to be huge when like, it comes to vendors. Or, I mean, dates are announced. Oh, you're going to get us going with all the. the I'm going to get us some illegal I'm, wiring in there. I'm like, <laughs> wow, no worry. He, he, he said it first. Yo. He said illegal wiring. Big insurance policy, thank the Lord. <laughs> he said it first. <laughs> Games Nintendo needs to remake or make a sequel to. Oh, okay, okay. I, I I actually made myself a little notes list on this one. This is some games that Nintendo either needs to remake or do sequels to. Do you guys have any? Beto, you don't have to show the people my screen. This is my cheat sheet, so you can keep that off of there. This is me just having it for myself. I'll start you guys off with one, just so I have it. Are you ready, boys? Let's see. Should I go with my first pick? Yes. My first pick. Oh, okay. This is already stupid. <laughs> why? Why? For real, why? What? Why is there not a punch out on the Switch? Why don't we have a new punch out game? Hmm. It's a good call. For real. There should be a punch out game. I feel like it would crush. I don't it doesn't have to be Mike Tyson, obviously. The Wii one was the last one we got, which I think was That was fun. Underloved maybe a little bit. I'm saying punch out on the Switch. But please, Mr. Miyamoto, if you're listening, Miyamoto son. <laughs> Do not make it motion control. We don't need it. Leave that option in there, but don't make it a must. I will say, why are you saying it? Isn't that the respect, Miyamoto son? That's perfect. It's perfect. We'll leave that one in. It's pretty good. It's leave pretty it good. in, baby. Or I just offended everybody. <laughs> Tony from the Camel Crew, I'm sorry. Right. <laughs> yeah. I, I got another one. I, oh, I don't know if I'm going to get love on this one. You guys better be thinking of some. I already um, have some. I, okay, have you go next then. I, yeah. I'm a huge Pilot Wings guy. I want Ooh. more Pilot Wings. Funky soundtrack, I think, bring it into the Switch. Give us some of that funky soundtrack. Now I will say, I might be a little more receiving to motion control on some of those landings. Like coming down into the paraglider and landing it and a little bit of motion control in there. Or maybe holding out to the side like the little wing paraglider guy. I think that could hold, hold a good shtick. Curtis, while well, these boys are thinking, what do you think? I want another Simpsons hit and run. Ooh. Oh, wow. That's I good. loved that game, man. I could play that game for hours and still be happy. GTA with yellow people. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, That's what yeah. my brother always called it. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> but I loved it. Uh, that is a fantastic game. Yeah. I and, think that'd be a good choice. And right even there. I even think that they should make another Mario Odyssey. Oh, well, well that's going to... Okay. Let me jump in and say this. <laughs> oh, he knows. <laughs> that's Nintendo? Yeah, let's go. Oh, oh, man. I'm going to make so many people mad. That's oh, all right. Nothing better to make people mad than looking at the camera while doing it. Nintendo. I know people like Tears of the Kingdom. I respect that. If you give us Mario Odyssey 2, please don't keep it the exact same and just call it a new game. I, I'm saying that with love because Breath of the Wild, <laughs> I loved it. When I saw Tears of the Kingdom, I was like, the same graphics, cool, it's an expansion pack, but they're calling it something different. I know it's not. I know it's not. Don't give me Mario Odyssey and put a 2 on it and just add a million things. I want a new game. I like when the Zeldas were making new Zeldas, new graphic style, new this. You're like, whoa, that's a new game. I want a Mario Odyssey 2 that's a new game. Did you just dump on my sequel? <laughs> Yo, just kidding. Yay and nay. I know there's going to be a lot of hate for that, and I I, I get I, it. I get what you're saying. No, I, I would say that if you give it a new name and, it, and a different type of look to it, it I feel would like definitely sometimes that works awesome. though. Like Diddy Kong's Quest. 
I I know it sometimes works, but yeah, you're right. It is would be nice. To There's see a lot like different. Galaxy Two worked, that's and true. that's basically the same thing. <laughs> I get it. I mean, I just I, I put so many hours into Odyssey One. I don't need more of that exact. I want Mario Odyssey Two. That's like the same, but give me something new, like like Mario Wonder, the new game that got announced. Oh, that looks. It's good. like paper. What is really that? Good. You didn't see it. Oh, I didn't see it. Oh, no. <laughs> you it sounded like the Arkansas Chris. figure when you said that. <laughs> It's basically yeah. new. You didn't say it. Hey, Mom, say something dumb. <laughs> all right, so you know how like there's new Super Mario Bros. Wii, and they all kind of have that same look? Yes. It's basically like that, but it's completely new graphic style. It's almost like Yoshi's Crafted World, or like Yoshi's Ooh, I like has that. a little more paper mache Crazy. looking. Oh, I like that stuff. So it's, it's, it's like the same, but it's new. Right, and that's kind of what I'm hoping for if we get a Mario Odyssey too. All right, boys, you're on the hot seat. I know you guys weren't prepared for this. Oh, Ricky's ready. Uh, Kid Icarus. Oh, I'd like yes, to see one. It was on my list. I'd like to see Let's one on the Switch. Go. The last one I saw was DS. That's the last yeah. time I saw one. Uprising. Yeah. Whoa. Which I didn't play. Like, I, I like, should have. Wait a minute. I was like, I haven't seen a Kid Icarus in a long time. Wow. That was on my list. I wrote down I'm Kid sorry, Icarus. Chris. No, that's okay. I'm on the same page with you. But. Dude, it's a great game. If you ever played Uprising, it's a really great game. Now, would you want it to be like a continuation of that style, or do you want him to go back to some baller, bad to the bone, eight bit style? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, you know what? I've been liking that eight bit style that the Switch has. Yeah. So I would go with something like that. I think a good HD eight bit goes a long way. Like when you have a good eight bit, it's a spicy. Meatball. Like what they did with the Metroids, the Metroids, because I think there was a couple of them. But the Dread, new, Dread, yeah, like that style that they Ooh. did with that. If they oh. took a game like Kid Icarus, like the old style, like a 2D version, yeah. and put, did it like that, I mean, I would love that. Dang. That was what I was envisioning. That'd actually be awesome. I think, a, a, like you, like you, we were saying, a good, a good 8-bit retro feels good. Yeah. I got more. Ready? I have you one. got more? Let's, let's go. Let let's hear one. Oh, I yeah. love it. Uh, Castlevania Symphony of the Night, but like a new Castlevania in the style of Symphony What of was the our night. last Castlevania? I think they were like the... 37 or dude, something like that. It was just like... <laughs> Shut up. I think it was 360. No. There was the 360 one. I don't remember like, one on the Xbox like One. Like something of darkness. If only I could pull up Google. Dang it. What, is, there was a tool. Everybody guess. Everybody guess less gas right now. Uh, the, there was a 360 one. Three, I think there it was, was really Castlevania. Probably, yeah. maybe. It was just called Castlevania. The newest one was the Switch. Uh, the Castlevania triple. Advanced Collection was in 2021, but that's different. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was But on I Switch. would love a revamp of like Symphony of Castlevania, but in that Metroidvania style. Mm. Like a 2D, almost like Metroid, but the I like that. Light stuff. Mm. All right. Let, let, hear me out on this one. Let me Earthworm hear. Jim. Ooh. Oh, yes. Let's do it. Now. What would that one be? Like four? So check this out. So there was supposed to be a new Earthworm Jim, which could have been a whole other conversation. Yeah. The Amico was supposed to get. An exclusive Earthworm Jim. I don't know if you guys know oh, the whole Amico thing. Watching that it was Tommy Tallarico's prep thing. If you, if you want to know more, on it, go watch uh, Pat the NES Punk. You're gonna, you're gonna stir up a whole can of worms. Uh, speaking of can of worms, <laughs> oh, Earthworm geez. Jim worms. Oh, that was a good one. I like that, bro. I got a, a literally a white privileged debit card in my my wallet. And I want to give it to you for that one. <laughs> that was I already great. Have one. Oh, you got one already. All right, cool, cool, cool. Uh, but I think that would be great. And the way they were doing it was back to the original art style, and it obviously didn't come out. Some people speculate if it even was like happening because the Amico. I, I didn't really get into the Amico stuff. But. What was the last Earthworm Jim? Was it on? I N64? think it was N64. The Earthworm Jim oh. three. It's a yellow card. Yellow there card. might have been three? something else Xbox, after. Right? No, there might oh, have been something else I don't after. Think there was anything? No, it would have been on right. Genesis. If anything. All right, let me let me get let me get one more in here. Ready? Okay. Bonk's Adventure. Oh, oh my God. gosh. Yeah, that's I know that's one. not Nintendo exclusive, and no. some of these aren't Nintendo, so neither was Earthworm Jim. Neither was Jam and Earl. Who has the rights to all those Turbo <gasps> Graphics games? Who has NEC, that? NEC, maybe? Who owns that stuff? Let me look. You guys keep talking while I do that. Hey, I know it's not Nintendo, but you know it'd be really sick. Really sick for the Switch. Get in my mind, Chris. Get in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm surprised Riff hasn't said this mind. one, but like, uh, maybe like an orange a Cuphead beanie. too. Wait, wait, he's going. Think he's of going. an orange beanie. Prop of the Rapper? Yes! Ooh. Yo! Well, that's not Nintendo, but like you said, yeah. But yeah. Kick punch, it's all in the mind. Chop, chop, chop. Woo, da, 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 that is a good freaking game, Ricky. Dude, that, that would be sick. They made a part two, though, called Unlammered Larry, Unjammer, Jammy, something. I can't remember the name. But that's a PS2, right? That it hasn't been around since. Yes. Yeah, it hasn't been around for. That would be great on the con. Switch. I, I know you guys were low on this game, but Bionic Commando to me would be awesome. That'd be awesome. I know low. Lower. Did you Jabbo like the 360 game? 
I never. I tried it and I did not like it. It was like a 3D version of that. I, I want that the 2D. Work. Yeah, there you go. Metro, like Metroid, the way they redid that Bionic Command. So I'll tell you right now, I loved the 360 version. Did I you? beat that game twice. Really? I remember it had a disappointing ending. I can't remember. It what was it was a 3D like third person. <laughs> it was basically behind. like playing Spider Man, but for non Spider Man fans. Really? You were basically oh, you're just, just swinging, swinging around, around the world. Yeah. yeah. Just a straight up swinger, just like Curtis on the weekends. <laughs> and then also, I wanted this one. I think this would be cool. Not a lot of people might agree. Base Wars. Hmm. Chris is just laughing. Nobody's giving me responses. Chris is still laughing for you audio <laughs> yeah. listeners. Did anybody play Base Wars on the NES? Base Wars was fun. It was really fun. I did too. not. So oh. I, dare I say, hate might be a strong word, baseball games. Realistic baseball games. I loved Ken Griffey's Winning Run, uh, a few others on the Nintendo. But Base Wars was you play as robots. The population Robot. of humans was going out. It was cheaper to hire robots to play in the MLB or whatever it's called. And... They got all robots to do it. It was fun. You could fight just like hockey. All the pitches were fast. There was cool music. I think it was by Ultra, which is Konami when they ran out of rights to make more games. Super fun game. I feel like for me, I haven't enjoyed a new baseball game in years. I'm saying years, years. Like at least one. <laughs> You were playing. <laughs> no, I, no I, I wish they would bring back Slugfest. Man. I used to love that. The like Mario you, one? No, just regular Slugfest, like where you could oh. be a, a lion or you could be a dolphin, a little leprechaun team, and what then the? like you'd hit them and then they'd flame up. You don't what remember any of those? That sounds fun, but I've never played it. You don't it. remember any of those? Chris's <laughs> acid trip four years ago. <laughs> Dude! <laughs> you guys don't remember Making playing the Slugfest? And then it's like, if you hit the batter enough times, that they would just flame and up. This was a regular, and this, this, was a regular, regular game. this was a regular baseball game. Yes! Wow. You don't remember never that? never heard of it. What did that have to do with leprechaun? <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you could be a full team of leprechauns. Like You'd really? have the same base stats as a oh, person. I've never played that. <laughs> wow! No idea. You got any more? I got more. Um, I did have one. Did you have Ricky? one? Ricky? I did, but I think... I know I lost I, it after the leprechaun. But it's technically not Nintendo. <laughs> what? Chrono Trigger. I mean, that's oh, on Nintendo. We'll count I it. had one. Zombies ate my neighbors. Oh, two things. That would be a good one. Ricky, Chrono Trigger. Great call. Good call. Great call. Great call. Did they not make any more Christopher, Chrono Triggers? Christopher, I literally knew you were going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> I feel, when I was making this list for myself, I was like, oh, dude, he's going to say... Yeah, they have, they didn't do anything after that. I don't blame him. The blame him is garbage. <laughs> I know you guys garbage that one. <laughs> like it was straight up garbage. Low rankings. Okay, this is one I wanted. I want a good Jurassic Park game. Ooh. We've had many Jurassic Park games, but there's never been... I mean, there's been a couple what? decent ones. What about one where you play as the T-Rex? That'd be, good. Th that'd be great. I'm, I think they might have done that on Did one of the that? Sega consoles. Maybe I could be wrong. Isn't that the arcade, the arcade one still the best for me? You're you're near the T Rex. Mm. And then Are they did really? it. Oh wait wait. No no no. You're driving. Driving. They did a Jurassic Park also though that was um 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 um, um. oh like you build the world kind of like evolution. Uh, that was Genesis I think. No no like recently. There you go. Ricky, shut up. Hey, that wasn't that. That's that was the, a great game. That's, that's, I'm like, that was a great that's game. That's probably the best. What are you laughing at, Curtis? <laughs> Lego. <laughs> Lego. That was like the white, that, that's the most white sounding thing coming out of Ricky's mouth. Like if you would have, if for audio listeners, they probably thought that was Chris saying that. <laughs> Lego. <Yeah. laughs> but literally, they know it was the this brown bearded mustache man. Today, man. Wait, 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 wait. I got one more. Oh, it's kind of like, it kind of reminds me of Dino Crisis. That's what I would like. But okay, I got one more. And I'm going to call it, uh, which one of these do I pick? Oh, God. Oh, I'm going to say both of them. Super Spike V-Ball and Skater Die. Ooh. You know why I say Skater Die? I love the skate games. I love them. I love them. But they're ultra realistic, which I love. But I want a good arcade jam style, not in the third person view like Tony Hawk. I'm talking Skater Die, different events, 90s thrash, grinding cop cars, being stupid, but not the Tony Hawk style. Not the. T I'm mm. talking straight up. Give me a good 32-bit version of it. Spice me up and call me Sully and slap me. Hey, <laughs> yeah. hey can I throw a random, random one that I really wish they made a part two for? Can I guess? Yeah. Call of Juarez. No, they made a part two of that. <laughs> <Why are you laughing>? <laughs> <laughs> I love that game, though. Call of Juarez. I to pick the brownest <laughs> name I could. Dude, it's horrible. It, it's random, but I love this What game. is I it? I play the heck out of it. You did, too. Bro Force. Oh, oh my god. I wish they made a part two. I would have paid money for that. You need to play Bro I was Force. like, Bro I need Force. I need a part two. It Dude, I good? played Bro Force with my son, so and good. my son brought that up recently. I was like, hey, what game would you want to play? And he was like, <laughs> oh, he was like Bro Force. I'd love to play that again. I was like, why did they not come out with a sequel right? to that? The most America game possible. <laughs> Everybody you play as, America. you play as every like 90s like 
He Man oh person. Gosh. Oh, that'd be Whoa. sick. Good. And you just everything is blow up boy. What what was this on? Like any? It was downloadable for like PS4, PS4 Xbox, yeah. all that. Oh, okay. But every level when you beat it. You shoot the devil, you gun him down, b pixel blood everywhere, and you jump onto a helicopter with one arm oh, and immediately so goes, good. it says freedom and just crazy like. <laughs> this is like the most so Rambo thing good. I've ever seen. Yeah, it is Rambo-ish. Yeah. If you could only be a gamer or a collector, what would you pick? And you can only choose one. Oh, shoot. This is, okay. Go ahead, Ricky. What's your question? Can I play the games as a collector or no? It's no. Straight up gamer collect. or collector? You can't have nothing in your garage, man. So let's set this up. This is rough. <laughs> Gamer or collector? So this comes down to two real questions. Playing video games or the thrill of the hunt? This is really what this comes down to, right? A gamer, you get to play those games, and we're talking current right now. You're given the choice. You never get to play a video game again, or you never get a hunt again. I'm gonna say I'm a gamer. You would pick gamer. Oh, 100 percent I think I would just have too much connection to the fact that like I went through college playing games with like all my baseball friends. Uh I would be able to connect with my friends like back home. Year? Yeah, when I had friends. And then uh <laughs> like you would just be able to play online, communicate with people, and just be able to like make connections. Like even when I was in eighth grade, I played Gears of War. I like have lifelong buddies from it. Wow. You know what I mean? So I would say gamer all the way. I have to say, I, I did think about this one when you told me this, Curtis. This is a, this is a, a, an important one. I would say for me, I'm going to go collector. And for me, and I've said this before, a lot of people that swap me recently have come to me like, hey, what are you collecting since the shed flooded, this and that? Like, what is your collecting? And I say, I'm always collecting fun. Because I, my, my, it's all about me collecting the experiences with you guys, like out at the swap meets. Going to the swap meet, waking up at 5 a.m. By the way, the other day I realized that I'd never wake up outside of the 5 o'clock hour. Every day of my life. Never outside of the 5 o'clock hour. Weird, I never thought about that until the other day. Time do you go to bed? Like 5 o'clock hour. <laughs> <laughs> no, pr pretty late, like midnight. It, yeah, he goes to bed at Dang, 12 for really? sure. Yeah. yeah. Like a 5 hour guy. Yeah, but with that said, I am obsessed with the hunt. I think of like, you know, a big example would be, you know, Mike Wolf and stuff. Like... When I play video games, for sure, I cannot deny it. I get emotional. It changes my my mood. It can get me through dark times. It can it can help me. It can make me, you know, I don't know, excited. It can do a ton of things for me. It's given me some of the greatest memories and nostalgia of my life, which is now responsible for this and the show and owning a convention. But I think in current day, I still can get most of those senses of thrills and I can have b build the nostalgia for in the future for what we've done together and all that from collecting when I see American pickers and I'm watching it every time without a doubt I think like verbally like that is the greatest experience to me just going around meeting new people and just you never know what's going to happen not this doesn't take away from the gaming thing right like it's no very... I think it's all it all coincides with one another like yeah. for me I mean like when you explain it that way of course it's like it's going to sway me towards but I'm, I'm going to say like in most of my downtime I'd probably be, be a gamer yeah 100% I get way. that how about you boys man Ricky, I was Rick. going to say games but then he kind of convinced no, me no no don't <laughs> let me convince you what were you going to say don't let me convince you I, out so you brought up a great point, but I always, I always think of it like, like I, I also like play games with my kids. So I'm like, am I, do I have to give that up too? So yeah, I guess would. as a, I would have to say gamer then because I don't want to give that up. That's like some of the best times I have. We you with them is my favorite thing to do with them. So you pick gamer, huh? I mean, I can I'll see you know why because I mean, like your kids, like you have Brixton who kind of he's more on the gamer side of it, but like they don't like games, but. His kids play. Like True, Maverick they really was, do play. Maverick calls me over. He's like, hey, you want to play Mario like with me? I'm like, all right, dude. I'll come over here. That is you know? true. I didn't think about that. My kids don't really care about games that much. So that makes sense. That is a, that is a, that is a big factor into this. I bet you this it's is a huge be factor for I me. I see Chris right now looking like we deep into conflicted. his soul. I, I am, yeah, because I had to really reflect on this. Like, this is a really, really tough one because for all the reasons you... Go. I was going to say, that's very... I want to hear it. I want to hear it. I want to hear what you're saying. Yeah, well, I was uh, honestly like flipping back and forth. I mean, the collecting part and like actually trying to envision like what my life would be like without one or the wow. other. Wow. And like years ago, I was always gaming. I mean, growing up as a kid yeah. and, and uh, of course, gaming was huge. And I wasn't that big of a collector until probably more recently I became more of a collector. Um, if it weren't for my son, I think I would probably stick with the collecting like you. But for me, my one of my favorite, favorite things to do 
possibly my yeah of all times is just sitting and playing games with my son like we're playing zelda kingdom of tears mm -hmm. tears of the kingdom, <laughs> kingdom of tears wow <laughs> oh, I, did did really. Really. <laughs> I, I just say whatever comes to mind first i feel like i'm gonna get some serious hate in the comments but no, um, i think that i would not want to give that up like when we're sitting playing and he's like hey dad let's play zelda tonight like i would give up all the collecting to do that got it for sure but you could collect with your kids it just depends if they're into it i tried to get him to come to the flea market last saturday i'm like dude i'm waking you up at five you're coming he's like dude i don't want to go and i was like come on i'm trying like try i want to get him to come but he doesn't like the collecting part. you know what i do a lot at the swamp meet when i'm collecting use pricecharting.com <laughs> yeah, we, have, we have many sponsored segments with price charting and we got to say that we're thankful for them we've talked about it we have multiple things to say about uh, about them they're a great site Great app coming, which we'll talk about later. Great app as well to look up the prices of games and what market goes first for comics and cards and a whole bunch of things. Chris, what is it this time that we want to tell the people about, which is great for the show, for real. Don't um, skip it. A subscription service that they have. Uh, so in addition to going on there, you can, of course, you know, go on and look up the values. Uh, they offer many, many other tools as a collector. Um, some of them you do have to pay for. They do have a subscription, a monthly subscription service that's yep. $6 a month. They also have one for retailers, which I believe is $50 a month. And I know that because I pay for that. Actually, I I am a subscriber to the retail. And you've for my been stores. a subscriber, all five yes. stores, right? All five stores, oh, yeah. Wow. So, and, and I think that's important for them to know too. Again, yes, this is sponsored by them, and we're going to be working with them. But this is integrated into our day to day life. Oh this no, we a, all use it for sure. This is not like a oh sweet. Uh, this is a better check out this anime game that we really love and we've never played in our lives but this is ecosystem for us yep and um so for the six dollars a month uh i'll read off some of these you can do a uh they have a lot value calculator okay so you can track the value of your items going up or down with price change icons which that's pretty cool like super you, cool you can add them all and then you can see if they've gone up or down you have unlimited collection folders so you could organize into Zombies ate my neighbor's collection folder. There's one person those. on earth that does that. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> what a fail. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, sorry, price charting. The worst way we Chris could have sold that. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> um, they have an eBay. This is a cool one. They have an eBay deal scanner, which lets you know if items are listed on eBay below market price. I like that. You can paste the list of items in to calculate your value, the value of the total items. So this is pretty good, I would think, if you were going to buy a lot of games or something. Somebody said, oh, I have, you know, 100 games. You could take that Excel spreadsheet copy and paste it into video game price charts to give you all the values wow. So, wow and there was a bunch of other stuff you can do too so good thank yeah. you and thank you too honestly for price charting for this for being a part of the system thank you for them you'll see us on their yeah. on their app Soon. Their Can't wait. It's gonna be great, you know? we're excited check out the link in the description thank you chris one, one question i have for you guys is what do you say to those people when they say that you're too old to be a gamer or too old to be a collector I feel like the gamer one is that okay so this is I'll, I'll be real right now so one of the and I was telling this to the boys the other night when we were just got done doing whatnot it's interesting because I'm very into like success podcasts I listen to a lot of like podcasts I'm like finances and how to you know thrive in the world and make money and this and that yeah. and I was telling them it's funny because we are all gamers like we play games all the time I'm Dude. on Super Nintendo all the time my one of my favorite things to play all the time but it's interesting that you say that because all of these wealth podcasts they have nothing to do with gaming nothing Zero. and sometimes one of the first things they say stop being little kids and get stop playing video games it's a, one of the first things they always say and then they keep going and i'm like dang like i'm i know i'm successful i do very well financially thank you lord literally thank you lord uh, for all this but i'm like i play games right like that's part and every time i'm always like it almost like makes me like not like their podcast as much because I'm like, oh man, like, yeah, I, I do strive to be successful. We are successful, but it's like at the same time, like, man, that's part of my life, though. You know, it feels like a little like kicking, kicking the, kicking the groin. Yeah, I think uh, there was like a podcast, and I follow Joe Rogan like religiously, and he he made that comment as well. I was like, you know, stop playing video games. I didn't and I'm know like, that. I didn't hear it from him. And I'm like, man, it doesn't make me think of any less, but that's just his opinion, right? True. Like yeah. for me, like I got like. I don't know, like 2,000 hours on Apex Legends. You know what I mean? It's like. Now, Curtis, that's not something to brag about. <laughs> you know, it's not something to brag about. Any, any other game bro, that I've been like, nice. Bro, I mean, I'm, not, I'm just saying, like, I, I, I spend a lot of my time. I think it's a big time for, for me to stress, like, a stress reliever. And it's also a big thing for other people. It's like, yeah. you come in and you, you just want to, like, game. I mean, it's like, you just. Yeah. 
worry about nothing else. It's just you and the game. Now, don't I don't. This is this is just me asking you. Do you think that is a two thousand hours that you're glad you spent, or do you think you could have used that two? This is not me hating on games. It's me just literally opening a conversation. Would for have been me, better used somewhere else. Uh, for me, with I feel like I do have in some facets ADHD in some facet because like I can never finish anything. So. For me to sit down and just game, dude, I, I'm the biggest procrastinator. I will do 10 things at once and only get half of it done. So I think it's a huge reliever for ADHD. And like yeah. for me, I kind of feel like I have that too. Like sometimes I can't focus and my mind is just racing like so fast. And if it's a stress reliever, but it's also like a focus, get your mind off of things. Totally. Like if I'm really stressed out and just not in the right headspace, if I sit down and play video games, my mind instantly like switches off of that. Mm. So in line with all the work we do and talk talking about work and stuff like that you do need outlets i feel like to as stress relievers some people go to the gym you they might run. do meditation Running is you my, might my run stress reliever, yep. yeah and gym for me is meditation stress reliever too working on those legs i'm trying <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i'm trying really did, hard did we tell the podcast that we do that or do we probably never not so we send videos <laughs> chris will send vi no i'll send videos of myself like curling and be like must look like Chris and then he'll send videos of him doing leg presses like, must get legs like riff and it's just it's a funny thing I have a long way to go my, I, I told you my wife saw one of those and she's Did like she what really? is happening what is this she saw it, she's are like, you what? cheating on me yeah, are, you, are you no yeah so Chris did you end up deciding like you'd be a gamer more than you'd be a collector yeah. Yeah. Even and I with always, like the store and all that. Like you yeah. and all that stuff that comes in. Well, I wouldn't even consider that collecting. That's more like business That's, stuff. But yeah. I collect, you know, shirts and games yeah. and all sorts of stuff too. But the but gaming for me, and I had to look back at like why I was always have been a gamer and drawn mm -hmm. to video games. Yeah. And I think it is for that reason of like stress and anxiety. Like mm -hmm. when I needed to get away from stuff, that has been my go to. Yeah. And um and I think a lot of other successful people do that too. I saw a video a long time ago of, uh, you know, Jonathan Davis from Corn, the lead yes. singer. He's yeah. a huge gamer. And he talks, they interview him about why he's a gamer. And think of that stressful career. You know, you're a lead singer oh, yeah, of a band. Scott Squatch. Scott Squatch, yep. Is he in a band? No, he's our tour roadie guy. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> he's that's been with right. Him for years. But he's a huge gamer and he talks about the same thing. Like he thinks he has ADHD and he, this is like his way to get. Uh, his mind kind of right. Yeah, you know? I feel like it gives me a little bit more balance, and uh, and and to be honest, like I could be on that. Like I'll do five different things at once. Like I'll be listening to music, video gaming, and then also have like the podcast while I'm doing this, like uploading. Right. I'm doing ten things at once, and it's like there's only one thing that I can really hone in on, and it's video games. Mm -hmm. And it's weirdly enough, like I could sp like you could give me a video game, I will spend hours on that thing trying to get it done. I can't play as much as I used to for sure. Like I definitely built my love. In the, in the 80s and 90s, like that deep rooted love. And I think, you know, say what you will, I think the Super Nintendo generation was the greatest generation in video games. So it's funny because even when I'm gaming, I'm just going back to that stuff anyway, right? Like yeah. if you ask me this question, it's like current games or collecting, I wouldn't even blink. Current games, throw them out the window for me. I know there's good ones. I know there is me hating. I know the comments are going to be like, hey, what about this game? I get it. Trust me, I do. But I, I just, I don't know. My brain's like, I'll play the retro ones to get my nostalgia, my heartfelt, my good time, my running guns, all that, and then I'll go running. I was really surprised to see Ricky's answer because I didn't think he'd pick gaming. Because Ricky, you're he's leaving the me at the swap collector. meet, bro. <laughs> yeah. I see how it is. Alone. You walk out here. <laughs> yeah. I get to sleep in. Benny, you back there? Come over here. You're taking this place. Yeah. Sleeping. It's about to get real white That's in here. Another thing. Sleeping in on Saturday and Sunday would be nice. <laughs> oh, dude, oh, not me. Gosh. When my alarm goes up at five and I go to swap meet, I'm like. Beep, beep, beep. Like, it's time. Let's go. There, there's some weekends when I'm not there where I'm like, I just need a break. I need to just re like recuperate and rest. And not me. If yeah. I'm not there, I'm like, oh, God, Ricky, what are we missing? It's a stress reliever, too, though, when you go out there. It's, yeah. It's For so sure. Funny. Like I said, that all coincides yeah. with one another. It's just like you'd have to choose one. That yeah. yeah. One. That's so, scary. That but what would you choose? Leave it in the comments below. Oh, also, yeah. wait, 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 before you end. What, what? Also, thank you for that audio listeners out there who oh, can't yes. leave a comment or leave a comment because I think aren't by the time this comes out I don't know what we'll be at but aren't we like coming up on a hundred thousand downloads yes on like in God, literally insane. less than four months and which is insane to us thank you and That's, yeah thank you, you and thank you guys for all the positive reviews we I read them all and it's just like we take the feedback and we try to just keep going with it like it's it's amazing I, I will say that is a massive number for being downloads not listens not that I mean that is that's massive and overwhelmingly bigger than I expected and we're trying to get our podcast out every two weeks on the full audio length yes. so every uh 
audio listener out there, please look, or even the video listeners, it'll be linked to the description of every yeah. YouTube video, and you can find out on all outlets. Even our social medias will be linked. So Yes, sir. And Ricky's, and Ricky's only fans. And Ricky's only fans. <laughs> I'm a subscriber. <laughs> Horror stories in game collecting and owning a store. Ooh, I like this. So, I, you're a store owner. We're game hunters. We've been out there forever. I know that I think Ian has done this before, like horror. I don't know what he called it, whatever. And this isn't where I took it from, but I was just like talking to Chris and we we're talking about things that he's gone through. I'm like, man, I'd love to hear a couple of, even from Ricky and I, if you have one, like maybe horror stories or things that you don't want to relive for anything within your world of owning a store. You know, I had to really think about this one and I don't have, th didn't have that that many. And I'm trying to think of like a horror story. I could start off with one of my horror stories. Uh, go for it. Yeah, you go I first. I mean, it's technically not within collecting, but it revolves around the world of collecting. But I'd love to go into more detail here because I've always wanted to go and to find my place to talk more in detail about it. And that's my shed flooding. Ooh. Oh. So this this shed has been the most bittersweet. If you don't know, um, I have had this game shed. Uh, it was an old rickety shed uh, when I started, you know, collecting. My backyard just was a shed full of tools and janky. Ricky and I started a YouTube show, and I'm like, hey, we should turn this into a game room. And we turned it into the most jank, jank version of a shed you can ever imagine, of a game room. Like half drywall up. Literally to get the flooring, I did a thing called the plywood pursuit and I would film myself going in dumpsters and grabbing random sizes of off-brand plywood to make the floor. Which I find funny because aren't you kind of like building inspectors both in one we don't sense talk or about another? That here. <laughs> we don't talk about Bruno. Yeah, at the time, bro. All right. I was just a churro slinger. <laughs> yeah, that's at that time. Name. All right. <laughs> we need to get a churro stand at SoCal. Uh, but I, okay. But moving on. Down. So and I got my 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 flo my flooring and, and dumpsters, and I got my carpet and dumpsters, like four foot square here, three by three square here. Ranky janked it together. Through time, it started to get mold, right? Maybe a year. Started to get mold. I'm like, all right, it's time to move on from this. Let me kind of refix it again. Redo it again. Take down the drywall. Put up new drywall. Clean it. Do all the stuff. It happens again in like six months. Then I'm like, okay, I need to do a real remodel. So I take off the drywall. Again, th this is the third, third iteration of the game room in a few That's years. The title rat right there. There was rats. I opened it. <laughs> boom. And like about seven rats jumped, were inside the drywall. Eee! And there was this one, one rat that we've showed on the show before. We have it on footage. A one rat ran away, climbed up the side of my game shed, and literally just went like this and went. And for the audio <laughs> listeners, he looked both ways and just dove off. And he landed head first and he conked himself out for like eight seconds. <laughs> <laughs> He's just like. <laughs> He went into Curtis mode for like eight seconds, <laughs> yeah. and then he got his bearings back and went off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and he went off. <laughs> and that was with Kurt, people saying too mean to you, but it's because I love you. No, I know. I love you too, okay, man. Okay, thank worry. you, sir. I love all you guys, man. Thank you. We love you, Curtis. Um, and then we had like a real contractor. This was like my time of being like, all right, I ranky janked it with me and Ricky, figuring it out, just like whatever, hiring a contractor, getting it done right, put all this money into it. Proper drywall, proper flooring, proper elevation, proper this and that. Stoked. All right. It's already semi horror story because of the first two times I've already gone bad. About six months go by, the flooring starts bending and bowing backwards. All of it. I start walking, I put my foot through the floor. And I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. Oh, yeah. We put like the wrong flooring down. We put didn't put anything that's weather treated, anything like that. So the flooring's bad already. Call Ricky and my buddy Andy. All right, redoing the shed again, a fourth time. Redoing the shed. We're going to put new flooring in. All right, stupid riff and his messed up, you know, messed up floor. So we go, we get the guys, I buy them lunch, we buy all the, dry, the, the proper flooring and everything, get it done. It's done. Finally, right? Everything's done. This is proper. This is the fourth game room. And California, about a year ago, maybe a year, no, yeah, about a year ago. Maybe not even. Six not months. even. That's like six, yeah. six months yeah. ago. We get crazy rains, which we don't get here in California, right? So my, I'm not ready for any of that in California. And it was one of those situations where it was raining hard night after night. I didn't think anything of it. I'm like, yeah, there's drainage back there. I'm sure you know, I don't even look. I'm in California. I'm like, Bleh. I'm just dingus. I don't know. And I go to bed one night and I hear the rain and I kept waking up in the middle of the night. And there was something in me that was like, I feel like something's going to happen with the shed. Like it was in my brain. Like something's not going to be right with the shed, with my game room. This is already fourth iteration of it. Um, finally, like 
four thirty, five o'clock hits, whatever it is where sun starts, not even sun, but just like light because it's cloudy and rainy out. And I opened my eyes and I was like, I, I need to go look at my shed and see. And I run to the kitchen and I open up those the, the the drapes or whatever it is right above the sink. And I just immediately see this giant seven foot wide puddle, like a couple feet deep of water. And I'm like, please, no, like, please not again. And mind you, this is when we just started collecting paper. Oof. And I have all this expensive paper. And guess where smart Mr. Riff had his paper? All on, on the, the floor. floor. Oof. On top of like a piece of like other she like construction paper so it wouldn't get dirty. All on there. I don't even I don't know why I didn't think about it. All I admit, this is all me being stupid over years. As you can tell, I'm not. I don't a know. Guy. I mean, that was more of like it's just unplanned. Like it just those rains were different. Well, I basically I run to the shed barefoot and I open it creak the door and I'm like no the water level didn't drop down it just stayed the same level as it was and I'm already a little bit above ankle deep in my shed and I open it and I could just see all my paperwork floating my ET press kits all this expensive stuff my my VHS my, my high end VHS my games consoles I had a ton of Wii's on the floor and I'm just a panic mode immediately I I at the time texted we, I was in a group chat with Ben uh, Ricky and Curtis and I meet him like boys. I need you and by the way testament to these guys They were all that all of them were there within like 20 minutes So I was like holy cow these guys are good friends But at the same time It was one of those situations where I have thought to myself. This has been a really cool Part of the show because we Ricky and I built that you know shed basically its inners for the past, you know, eight, 10 years at that point together. It's been a part of the show. Retro Rick actually was like, when I told him what happened, he's like, dude, don't tear it down. He's like, that is a huge part of your show. Like Retro Rick, huge fan. He's like, I've been watching that shed for years, for years and years and years. Please do not tear that thing down. It's a part of your, your history. But to me, it's like, I haven't fixed it since then. And this was like six months ago. Part of my brain like can't get myself to do it again. You don't even walk out there. You I don't go out there anymore. You sold. I mean, I went there and you, I I bought a bunch of the stuff you had in. Oh, there. I've sold a bunch of stuff in there. Yeah. Right now, there's I'd say a good amount of NES games. Yeah. Skate a lot of skateboards, high end skateboards. Thankfully, those are all on the walls, like on the walls, and signs. Those are like the main things that are in there right now. Everything else has been moved out or sold or put somewhere else or pawned off to a friend or traded and it's weird it's almost messed with my brain because it's been such a long amazing part of my story is like what the show is and funny at certain times but also a, a everlasting horror story that my brain is like people ask me to swap me all the time like what are you doing with the shed after the shed the game shed and i'm like nothing it just sits there i can't get myself to tear it down and i can't get myself to fix it and I don't know what it is. It's like a mental block of like, I don't want to do either. You're afraid to take on that, that another project because it's going to be emotional in the sense. Yeah. I like, I don't know, like if I feel good knocking it down, like mentally, like it's been like one of the longest standing things besides Ricky of the show. <laughs> yeah. Honestly. Yeah. Thank God Ricky's still alive. Woo. Ricky's never let me down. Yeah, Ricky's always been the first person that's pretty much been there to fix everything. For oh, yeah. Ricky's always... Him and Andy, I guess, right? In the yeah, same. my buddy Andy, too, clutch. He was, like, the only smart man. Dude. We're all out there with, like, <laughs> hey, bro, it's, like, flooding and still coming in. And we're all there with, like, little buckets and spoons, <laughs> well, like, splashing I out water. I didn't want to start just, like, taking a shovel and just start making trenches around your yeah. yard to, like, to be able to divert the water. Dude, so, the dog trenches, though, really helped. <laughs> dude, the night before, I stepped because of Taffy. She has that hole My on the side. My dog was building holes. Uh, we were doing our little whatnot stream and all that, and I uh, I walked around the table, and it was pitch black. I stepped in that hole, and it was full of water. I, I've My never, leg was I've just I've never covered. asked you your opinion on it, like, overall. Like, what are your thoughts? Like, if you were me, I mean, you've been on the show since day one yeah. on the shed. What would you do, the game shed? You really want to? I would rebuild it because it's so. I, to me, it's always fun to rebuild it. So you're saying rebuild, like knock it down and rebuild it, or remodel it? So, I I would say remodel it, but I don't want to go through that again. Like I have, I have, I had fun every single time we rebuilt it. But if we're gonna rebuild it again, I don't know if there's a way we can just like lift it up, put it on something. Because Rick's right, that's like part of the show. That 
old raggedy yeah full of possums shed is the best thing we've we're, we're doing when we used to do whatnots back there you could literally just hear possums fighting <laughs> up there <laughs> <laughs> it's like this I used to freak out man it's, i just hear this, this little chatter above me You're like, oh, it's raining <laughs> but it's it, it i almost think if we did tear it down i'd have to like leave a wall up you know, <laughs> like, and that's the wall we film on. Because I, I feel like if that thing went down, bro, we'd have to, like, film, like, you know, a Tim Allen, Tim the Toolman. It's like a proper remodel. Salute, oh, oh. salute to our shed, you know, because I don't think I could just tear it down. It with. sounds like it has so many memories that, like you said, like, you it's... wouldn't want to take it down. Maybe make it a collective thing where you get a group of us to come over and help you rebuild it. Make yeah. it 30 or something Don't like that. Don't sign yourself up for something I'm unless you want to I think I just threw, put myself out there. If Chris, you needed are you good yeah. with tools? Yeah, I actually am. Okay. I used to work, build like houses with my brother, so I'm pretty good. Really? Oh, oh, I, was, I yeah. used to I work with my grandpa and resident. You. <laughs> no, I'm not great, but I can cut wood and like put up walls and yeah. stuff like Curtis, that. Curtis, you good? Yeah, I used to work with my grandpa in residential construction. So. Oh, man, I was calling oh. the wrong guys. Seriously. <laughs> yeah. Me and Ricky were just out there with tic tacs and thumbtacks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that'll hold. Yeah. That'll do. My, my grandpa's, uh, he's 85 and he's still doing general contracting. That guy wow. is amazing to me. But like, that kind of stuff, I feel like, keeps you going. Oh, yeah. He's as witty as could be. I think if he didn't do that, it would kind of struggle. I, I feel like that is such a crucial part of longevity and youth is continuing to stay active and thrive and do things and give your minds, you know, one of the, you know, places to be, I used to read meters in like old homes and old folks homes. And you could see the ones that were lively were the guys that were outside in the back, like just chatting it up or building something or doing some gardening. And then you'd see the guys who like, you know, are sadly like, you know, slipping away, just kind of like watching TV with no real, you know, pursuit of anything, which is what would happen to you guys if you guys picked gaming over collecting. <laughs> no way, dude! I'd be like, the, on the fourteen-year-old, I'm still destroying you, kid. In video like, games, yeah. Well, dude. I'm just I, dunking on dude. teenagers. <laughs> they used to work a lot. Like we we do like old folks' homes, and I'm just like looking. I'm like, man, if they were playing games, they'd be having such a fun time right now. We I was gonna say, I've always wanted to know what the future holds for us when we're like right. 70, 80 years old. Collecting in a, in a nursing home. The collecting is long gone. We're yeah. done. We're, <laughs> Wait see, a second. If you guys keep gaming over collecting, this is, you will be in a nursing I, home. Hey, but I want to be the like option. 80 year old gamer. I hope that I still have it within me to sit there and like yeah. game when I'm 80. Yeah. Instead well, of just like blindly like watching the TV to like yeah, still yeah. actively. And I think it'd be good for your brain to be sitting in there, you know, gaming. Yeah. But I've always wondered if our generation will end up like. There'll probably be a swap meet simulator by then. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that would be. Wow. Sick. I don't hey. like that. I don't like that. No. Hey, hey, honestly, you guys. Trash. No. <laughs> Put hey, on the honestly, VR. I, got, I get hyped up. I don't know if you guys ever seen it, but pressure washing simulator. That thing is sick. That's <laughs> that is such a, str a stress reliever. It's just like you just washing a build and you're washing a sign. It's somewhat relieving. It's like you're like a tractor simulator. I never I, done that. Is it I, VR? No, it's just like in the you know it's like PC or anything like that. Like it's on a Steam. I do not like the idea of collecting swap meet simulator. <laughs> I dare Yo, I say I hate sick. that idea. <laughs> and then the the ver the, the variables I'm that in. go into that, that'd be sick, dude. Like, what do you get this week? Some but I want it to be VR, yeah, yeah, yeah. and we're 80 years old, we're sitting in the nursing home, and I hit you guys up, He's and I'm stressed. like, hey, put on the VR, and we'll go back in time and meet at the swap meet. What if we all have a kid <laughs> or, or, we can't get up? Or, <laughs> no, no, <laughs> or, you freaking idiots, we go meet up in our wheelchairs and actually go Ooh. to a swap meet together. Yeah, like we did dudes. talk about that, dude. We there are some old guys still going around in like yeah. the wheelchairs. See, there. I love that. When yeah. I see that, Ricky and I know there's two yeah. guys especially that go to OCC when we rarely go there now anymore. But when we did, two guys, both in short shorts, probably 80s, cruising around laughing, looking at stuff. And I'm like, that better be us. <laughs> You know, yeah, I'll that push you guys or I'll push you guys in your wheelchairs. I got I'll, you. I'll, Chris, yeah, you're gonna die before me. <laughs> 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 Yo, I'm 10 years younger. Don't no, we'll be all right. We'll be all right. <laughs> There's no way you're outliving me, bro. I don't yeah. care if you're 10 years younger. <laughs> There's no way that you're outliving uh, me. I know the way I eat, but I mean, uh, no, unless I go and like, you know, uh, do you guys have any like horror stories that go in with your collecting? Not like that. I, like, no, like I mean, literally. That's a, yeah, that story. I the only thing I could really think of is like, we recently with the stores, um, we had a we we started getting a cockroach problem in oh. the back of one of the stores, and we don't serve food. You know, we don't have anything uh -oh. kind of. So I thought maybe it was us with the food, maybe guys eating or something like that. That's what I thought. And yeah, you would think, right? And I was like, oh, you got to take yeah, Blake. Dang you got to take the trash <laughs> All out. That smut. All that. Um, <laughs> 
<laughs> You're just dirty <laughs> yeah. slut yeah. Cockroaches cockroach. get attracted to it. Um, but, you know, trying to get rid of them with fumigators, all this stuff. And I'm like, I don't need, want this to spread into the front of the store. Where is this coming from? Well, it turns out what it is, and I'm sure you guys have heard about it, but sometimes, like, the consoles just get nests oh, of that's cockroaches. So gross. Dude, no, this nest that. that came out of this, it was in a PlayStation 2, and there was a nest. Good that, old PlayStation. Classic. Just, just, classic garbage. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So we've, we've, we've had this happen twice now. Once was a while, like a couple years ago, there was a PS2 that got traded in. When they get traded in, we test them out. Looks good. The PS2 worked. We yeah. took it. You know, no, there was no outward sign that this thing was just a massive cockroach nest. But we took it in the back. One of my managers, James, found out that there was, he's like, hey, I think there's cockroaches coming out of this. So I got the idea. I said, let's, I want to do like a little experiment. Let's shrink wrap this thing. I want to see if we can kill all these cockroaches in there. Wow. So we took the PS2, yeah. we shrink wrapped it. They instead of just opening it, instead of just, or throwing it out. Yeah, or throwing oh, it out. So I was okay. like, I want, and we, we like left it out back. And um, I wanted to see if we could kill them all, and then maybe I would open it up and try to clean it out. These cockroaches are like the most indestructible things. They lived oh, yeah. within that shrink wrapped, probably limited amount of oxygen. They must have been eating each other. Oh. And by the end, there was literally like thousands of cockroaches in this oh. shrink wrapped PS2. Wow. Yeah. So anytime we have a cockroach problem now that comes in, I know where it's coming from. We have to check all the consoles. It's probably in one of the consoles. There's a cockroach nest that gets traded in. So that is my horror story, just having to deal with that. Wow. I, I've seen like a people on YouTube and like, shorts they'll have like the controller and it's like a like a transparent controller and you can see like tiny little like they zoom in and there's like thousands upon thousands of like little like gnats and bugs just like Ooh. like moving at full pace like little microgasm i don't know if that's the word microorganism sorry i was thinking of curtis <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Curtis. Microorganisms. <laughs> pick on me more. Yeah, no, you're I, good. I, 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 I it's not in my you. nature. You know how it goes. Yeah, yeah. But I, I've seen those before, and I'm like, that is disgusting. But I think it's pretty common within. But this is with a microscope. Yes. Like tiny organisms. Okay. You, right, that's what you're talking about, Yes. Right? Yeah. Well, no, you can see to the eye. I think yeah. my biggest horror story is when I came home, and like we just got a new puppy. And we have the GameCube and, like hooked up to the TV, and it's on the oh. floor. And you let the little puppy run around, you're not really noticing it. And then you come back, and there's pee. Oh, yeah. The controllers are ripped up by the wires. Yep. Your games are all scratched up. Like, literally, I came home, and it was like my whole collection of just like common video games, major party ones. But like, they're just all tore up. And you just sit there, and you're like, Mom. When was that? Ah, uh, dude, I was probably in eighth grade. Oh, wow. Like that. Maybe even younger than that. Curtis' and mom just wanted to stop playing video games. She's like, yeah, the dog did it. <laughs> no, that dog, that dog was, that dog was hilarious because like it was funny because you would smell the poop and you'd be like, it was there around Christmas time. Christmas time. And then you'd go and you'd try to smell where it's at. It's right under the tree, like a little present. Oh, and you're, oh, no. So you're like crawling. Like it's the most degrading. You're like crawling under the back of the tree to grab dog poop. It's just like, man, it just gets that. So your dog would poop crawling. Dude, that's, that's pretty, that's what are you talking skill. about? It's a puppy dog. It would go under the tree. I'd be the one crawling for it. So Good old <laughs> wouldn't Chris. be one of the present that I would want. But um, yeah, it would suck to see like your stuff would just get destroyed by just an animal. Oh yeah, Horrible. you know what I mean? They don't know better. They're just playing. How about you, Ricky? Nothing. Nothing crazy like that. I think the craziest thing was like I think it just happened like two years ago. I was organizing all my PS2, Xbox 360, and Xbox One like library. So I left it outside. Like. All right, so Costa Mesa, you know the do in the mornings, right? Oh, yeah. So, dude, I, by the took, beach. I took out everything out of the shed. If you guys have seen my shed, it's insane. There's a ton of stuff in there. So I just put all these games all around my tramp my kid's trampoline. And I, just, I, I left them there. I got, I got lazy at the end. It was like 10 o'clock. I was like, you know what? It's not going to rain, nothing like that. Go to sleep, wake up in the morning. The dew was like a rain dew. So when I got outside... <laughs> <laughs> the rain dude. dude. All, dude. <laughs> the rain dude. <laughs> All the games are ruined. So I so if you guys see my PS2 collection now, it's nothing. I, oh. I was so mad I oh. threw it most of it away. Because I don't like just disc only games. And that's what, that's what hoarding does to you, Ricky. You lose <laughs> track of where your things are, what's important, and how to keep it organized. Dude, dude I lost some real good life. games. You could probably press that stuff now. Like instead of throwing it out, those wrinkles of the dew, like you could comic book press that. Probably. Oh, yeah. In a pressing book press. It's gone now. Yeah. It's gone. It's gone. <laughs> yeah. They're gone. But I, bet you I, 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 I was that so you. mad. I was <laughs> the other out. day, this is kind of on top of it, but kind of not. The other day when we were looking at uh, some footage, Jared, my editor, sent it to me. He's like, yo, look at this clip, right? <laughs> <laughs> and it was. 
<laughs> Curtis sold a bunch of Nintendo powers to Gerard. <laughs> Poor Gerard's gonna learn this right now. Wow. And there was like a good one in there. And you can see <laughs> I never said anything we'll have of me going through the Nintendo powers with one hand. I'm like, oh, this is sick. This one's sick. <laughs> <laughs> you really ripped the front cover off. I'm like, put them down. I'm like, yeah, guys, these are good. He just moved on. I was like, oh, Gerard, I owe you like 20 bucks, bro. Probably more, but I'm sorry. I just realized that. Yeah, I think it. there was a horror story. Uh, how about uh, Chris's whatnot stream? Oh, oh no. 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 <laughs> God, just you the perfect wait. way to end this yes, conversation. Perfect. Okay. Can you tell them what you were doing? But please let me explain what happened once it started because I was an, a, a viewer. I wasn't there, and I think a viewer's perspective is much funnier. So first of all, I, we, we've done a couple whatnots to the store. Online and, live selling. This isn't a sponsor, but that's what it's like a live eBay type thing. Yeah. So this was the second one we've done. And I found out from you guys afterwards, and you and other people that watched it, Curtis was there with me hosting it, and okay. that it was an absolute riot. And the people thought it was hilarious. But meanwhile, when we were running it, I'm like, what is going well, tell on? Tell what happened. Give them the story. So we were... Uh, do you want me to do it, tell the first yeah, one? Yeah, go for it. Just well, the tell, first no, one, no. no. Tell the, the second, second first, one. The second one, one. only. Yeah. <laughs> tell them this story because this was you poor soul. All right. So the second one, uh, we went to run the stream. We had it all set up. We listed all the items. Everything was planned out. We get to go start it. And I guess I connected to the wrong internet. So there's two Wi-Fis in the store. And one is one that I thought was the right one. And once you start the stream, you cannot change it. You then have to like end it. You can't go into settings and just put on a new yeah. stream. So or a new at uh, least that we know Wi-Fi, right? So the whole thing was like eight bit garbled. <laughs> it went. Bit. It, I I immediately went in your room and I was like one of those moments where I'm like, oh, Chris is on. Chris hasn't been on whatnot in so long. I'm gonna go support him. I go in and the minute I get in there. I just see a comment <laughs> section filled with roasting. Oh. And Chris looks like he's straight up filming on a potato. <laughs> and I would say be below 8-bit. You couldn't hear him. He's paused the entire time. Oh. This poor guy's trying I to tried. build his whatnot presence. I tried to keep it was it the definition of a bad stream on all levels. Couldn't hear. Couldn't see. Things weren't going right. And because of this, not only because of that, but because people couldn't even see what you were holding, hear what you're saying. Chris is still running items. Curtis is still pressuring. I'm like, yo, let's keep things going. One dollar, 20 seconds. But go. nobody could see what you were running. <laughs> yeah, that's hilarious. But even funnier, like, he didn't even preface this. He goes in. He goes, yeah, yeah, we're all kind of set up. And then he goes to hook up the iPad. Completely dead. Like, he's like, we're going to run the stream off of zero percent. <laughs> It was one of those situations where it turned out to be a fun situation only for one reason, and that's the because roast. the entire comment section was roasting you, but in a loving, funny way. Like, they oh, were yeah. having fun with you. It was but fun. we were still having fun. Curtis and I were having fun with it, but it was stressful. Did you have fun when you saw the numbers at the end of the no, night? No, the numbers were nothing, but I, I, they, everything went for cheap. But I was, this was all stuff I kind of just wanted to move out yeah, of the yeah, store, yeah. so I didn't care about the numbers so much. But I was just surprised when we ended it. Curtis and I were like... Damn, that sucked. Like, I'm so disappointed. I was more disappointed that, like, people didn't get to view it and stuff like yeah. that. I'm like, dang, that sucks. You know, we put on, like, a bad show. And then I get, like, the text <laughs> messages. That was amazing. Best show ever. Like, amazing. Like, it was so funny. Like, it <laughs> yes. was so comical to watch that. And I was like, that was comical? And yeah. they were like, dude, we were dying laughing. You said you were dying but laughing. My will, wife was watching it. And she said she was dying that's, laughing. That's part of entertainment, right? When things go wrong, think of like SNL skits back in the day where the character breaks and they start laughing when they're not supposed to laugh. Yeah. And it makes everybody else laugh. It was one of those situations where everything that could have gone wrong was going wrong. So I think it made the experience. It became entertainment at that point. Yeah. Right. You guys played along with it. So oh, I yeah. think that helped it completely. I definitely took a, a word out of your textbook. Just keep the energy and whatever it happens your happens. energy was amazing um I, and, I could see it in your eyes the, the little pixel that i could see <laughs> <laughs> he was like, when, when chris looks at the screen he's like yeah uh. <laughs> but um the first one we ran too so which was maybe like a month or two months ago now yeah apparently when i went to do it i went in on my phone and then i went in on an ipad and it was cross-streamed did you even know you can do that i yes i know you can so they come in at two <laughs> angles. So if you're and people get different views of what you're doing. So I would be reading comments. It was like, can you I would be trying to show we set up both no. cameras like this. So I'd be showing the item over here and then there'd be messages. I can't see the item. Can you turn your why are you not facing the camera? Because a lot of people would hop in and not know why? that it was cross -trick. You know, you know, like two of the most long standing whatnot sellers who could help you with every bit. 
of what you're doing. I'm learning. I'm getting okay. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so then I would have to go back and forth between both. That was two hours of doing that. That was really frustrating. That's bad. So now our thing is we're going to run just horrific whatnots. That's what yeah. we do. That's yeah. Eight bit whatnots, bro. There might be something to that. I said yeah. I was going to turn the lights there off might be on something the next to one. And that's a perfect lights. way to close this one out. I'm going to say thank you guys for all the support. And thank I you to PriceCharting.com. Yep. Thank you. Just price mention with price charting, they do have a mobile app coming out. So oh, in August. In August. By the yes. time this goes out, that will probably be out. So be on the lookout for price charting app, which will be huge in my opinion. That is, oh, that yeah. is huge. Yeah, but the accessibility for, for years. Because right now I have it saved on my phone as like you click it and it takes you right there on the website. But this is huge. Yeah. Thank you for sponsoring us, yep, Price Charting, you. for working with us. It really means the world to us. And like Good I said, us. all audio link description uh, full episodes will be in the description of each video. And I just want to say thank you for the support again, guys. Yes, thank, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Yeah.